my friends in the film fandom, wherever you may be and however you may be watching, thank you so much for giving us this little bit of your time. Uh, this is These next two shows tonight tomorrow are going to be ones that I should really just kind of hand off to Jeremy and let him go. Fruity Gamer is here, your ghost host. These are the two experts that are going to really have to carry me and text through this thing. Because while we have watched now all eight episodes of, uh, of Fallout, uh, the, the real deep lore of this thing is really going to be on their shoulders. But uh, we're all here to talk about Fallout. Uh, got the usual crew here tonight. Uh, Cora is still moving in between states right now. But next time we have a review that she's available for, she will be back as well. Uh, starting with my Heather Life Mate Jeremy. What's up, brother? Uh, I don't know if anyone understands how excited I am for this. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know if I can begin to tell you because we'll be here for the next like 12 hours if I don't shut up. So, uh, <laughs> but <clears throat> I appreciate, we didn't even actually coordinate this, but I appreciate that, you know, your two best vault dwellers down here have like a matching. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't you. even realize that was the same shirt. <laughs> this is, it's very close. This is the one from Bethesda. So it's, yeah, that's close enough. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited about this. This is one of my favorite uh, game series. I even, I mean, I've got the Brotherhood of Steel tattoo right here, and I got this before the show came out. So don't everybody get any <laughs> ideas. You can go back and watch our previous shows. You will see it on me. So don't come at me. All uh, his ink is there. It's been immortalized on YouTube. Go check it them out. <laughs> it's there. So uh, yeah, let's uh, grab your Nuka Colas, turn on your Pit Boys to uh, your favorite radio station, and let's fucking go. <laughs> And, of course, the shape of Lone Star State, my man, Tex. What's up, brother? Oh, uh, you know, I'm excited for a completely different reason because it is National Crawfish Day. I don't know if y'all knew this or not, but here in the great state of Texas, we love our crawfish bowls. And one of the deliveries I did today, they were having a crawfish bowl and invited me to partake. And I ate about 10 pounds of crawfish, sausage, <laughs> and shrimp. So I couldn't be any more full. So, you know, hey, let's do this thing. It's all good. He's ready to talk about radiation and cousin, cousin stuff because he's got a belly full of crawfish. <laughs> hey, apparently, apparently, cousin loving was is not just in the great state of Arkansas; it's out west too. So I don't want to hear them hippies, you know, crapping on nobody. Well, so it, like, is southern, it is southern good. California, so yeah, take that for what you well, will. You know, I mean. Now I will say I'm glad that I don't I'm not dating in this world because I would hate to have like be like my opening line to somebody be like, Hey, my sperm count is 150 million. How's your day? That would be very weird, I will I will say, but you know. Well, it, if it got me laid, whatever, I know it was that line. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can get in the wasteland. <laughs> and, and somebody who's probably got a better sperm count than all of us, your ghost host, our dinosaur expert. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How do I even go from there? <laughs> well, that was it. Perfect. What you do is you just own it. Like, yeah, I'm probably the youngest person in the stream right now. I've probably got the better sperm count than everybody else. <laughs> he's he's young and youthful still, so you know. Still got that glow. And it's not the radiation, but he's got that glow. Hey, <laughs> your sperm count might be higher, but I guarantee you I have the highest blood alcohol level here out of anybody. So. <laughs> I'm working on it. I've got my uh, I've got my bottle <laughs> of uh, Yellowstone bourbon and uh, here, so I'm, uh, I don't even, well, I'm working on it. I should have got a glass drink of out of my, drink out of my Giants first. glass. <laughs> we got the series win in Miami today. Good job, Giants. Maybe your bats will wake up for the rest of the year. We can actually, you know, win the World Series. But uh, yeah, obviously, uh, we're here to talk about the. Okay. Uh, we're here to talk about Fallout. This is, I mean, very impressed by this show, and apparently so are a lot of other people. Uh, yeah. Fallout is an American post-apocalyptic drama television series created by Graham Wagner and Geneva Robertson Dorette for Amazon Prime Video. Uh, based on the role-playing game franchise created by Tim Kaine, the series stars Ella Purnell, Aaron Matten, or, I'm sorry, Ellen, Ellen Martin, uh, Kyle McLaughlin, Moises Arias, Zila Mendes Jones, and Walton Goggins. The show depicts the aftermath of the Great War of 2077, an apocalyptic nuclear exchange in an alternate history of Earth where advances in nuclear technology after World War II led to the emergence of retro, I mean, a retro-futuristic retro society and a subsequent resource war. Many survivors took refuge in fallout bunkers known as vaults, unaware that each vault was designed to perform psychological experiments on the vault dwellers. <laughs> 218 years later, in the year 2296, a young woman named Lucy leaving behind her home in Vault 33 to venture out into the dangerously unforgiving wasteland of a devastated Los Angeles to look for her father. Along the way, she meets a Brotherhood of Steel squire and a ghoul bounty hunter, each with their own mysterious past and agendas to settle. 
Fallout premiered on Prime Video April 10th of 2024 and received critical acclaim with particular praise going towards the performances, particularly Purnell, Mott, and Goggins. Writing, visuals, production design, and its faithfulness to the source material. Rotten Tomatoes has reported a 93% approval rating based on 88 critic reviews. The website's critical consensus reads, quote, an adaption that feels like a true extension of the games, Fallout is a post-apocalyptic blast for newcomers and longtime fans alike. Now remember, guys, we're going to try to stick to the first four episodes in this one. We'll do episodes five through eight. Uh, tomorrow night, but uh, I'll, I'll go to text first before we start letting uh, Jeremy and, and Brooding Gamer kind of run the show here. <laughs> I have a feeling they're going to have a lot more to say about this than us, but I'll go to text first. Yeah. The first four episodes, give me some quick thoughts on what you saw in these episodes. Yeah, I knew nothing about Fallout besides nuclear apocalypse and, you know, whatever kind of generic knowledge. So I went in completely novice blind. Um Joe's fine. I mean, nothing. I, it's it's kind of hard for me to explain my feelings on this. I like a lot of the things that the show does, but for me overall, it was just okay. Like it wasn't bad. It wasn't like some Disney Plus Marvel Star Wars shit that we've been getting the last few years. <laughs> but it was just like it. It kind of seemed like they had a lot of plot getting in the way of the story, and and I'm not sure if that was because they just wanted to overload it with as much as possible. And this was, and it was just kind of poorly edited out, but you know, it was, um, it was an interesting watch. It was, it's not a bad watch. It's something I would recommend, but like I said, I'm coming in completely blind here. So I, I look forward to listening to the, uh, educated folks beneath Frank and I for you know <laughs> enlightening me on this one. So it'll be fun, but you know, it was all right. Nothing special though. I know. Broody Gamer, how about you? Uh, again, we're, we're talking about the first four episodes. And just taking those episodes into account for right now, what did you think of what we got in the first half of this series? Uh, freaking amazing. I mean, <laughs> looking at it, it was um, yeah. just for the first four episodes. I actually had to go and rewatch those four today just so I made sure I didn't slip and say something from five <laughs> to eight. But, uh, it, I mean, it, it was great because it's not following any specific game. It's not, it, it's following its own story with Easter eggs and references to past games mm. as if, you know, those have been events that have happened. Uh, I think they've portrayed that very well so far. And, uh, you know, the first episode definitely takes a little while to get through. It's kind of slow, but, you know, how else are you going to introduce? Unfortunately, they introduced the best character at the very last second for not even very <laughs> long. But, I mean, apart from that, I think they did an absolutely fantastic job portraying the world of Fallout, um, which we've only seen through video games up until this point. And honestly, I even mm -hmm. said something to, uh, to Grim that I feel like maybe Bethesda did a better TV show than they did producing the video yeah. game. Yeah. I only had one stutter the entire series. <laughs> but uh, well. it, was, it was very good, the catching the references. And I mean, even now I'm still oh, God. learning new things that uh, I didn't catch prior, which uh, we'll cover later um, in this particular series discussion. But uh, it, it's funny because it's one of those you rewatch it and you're still finding things. You're like, oh, wait. If I look to the left in there, whatever, you know, <laughs> it, it was really good. I, I appreciate a lot of the references and uh, definitely have a lot to say. I don't know. Jay, how about you? Four episodes, the first four episodes, uh, was it everything that you wanted it to be as a fan of not just the game, but, the, you know, you guys so steeped in the, the story of this thing? Uh, for sure. Um, like he mentioned, um, there's a lot of things in this that, it, while it is its own story in its own uh section of the of the u.s although we've we've been to this location before in the very first game but you know uh and really this and it, it, there are references like you said to other games like really the story of this is kind of like uh fallout 3 where you know your dad goes missing and now you're going out to go find your dad and that's uh, who, by the way, in Fallout 3 is voiced by the ever-wonderful Liam Neeson. So, I'd go find him too if my dad was Liam Neeson. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and the character model looks like Pierce Brosnan. So, you got like kind of the best of both worlds right there. Um, yeah, it it really uh, captured that this 
I mean, this wild wasteland to use, you know, the proper, you know, perk uh, term uh, that, that we get to, we get to see it through, you know, Lucy's eyes. Who's kind of like this kind of like a blank slate to this naive person to this world. She's never seen it before. And when I was watching this, I'm like, because if, if you know, you know, and if you at least know, like he, like you mentioned, or like you mentioned, Frank, the, the vaults were not exactly uh, designed just for safekeeping people from the radiation on the surface. Uh, vault tech are, are some slimy bastards and they will conduct. And I mean, if you want to look them up, I recommend anybody just go look up a list of vaults and then you're going to really be happy. You ended up in a vault like Lucy where I was thinking, is this really, she's going to get a boring vault as in she gets a control vault that has no experiment. But then I'm, and then I realized story-wise like, Oh, because when you go to a vault and you think, Oh, I got this false sense of security that everything's going to be okie dokie. Right. (laughs) And yeah, you see what I did there. And (laughs) that has just been a, I hate that that's now a verbal tick and I, I'm kind of mad, but not really. <laughs> but so when you go to another vault and you think it's going to be fine and then you realize it is absolutely not. I'm like, there it is. That's what it is. Because every time you find a new vault, you're like, OK, what happened to these people? You know, <laughs> yeah. so it is a cool way to develop that. Like, oh, things are not as as, as well as they seem. And is as much as you want to train in combat and and uh, she definitely had the small guns perk. When you get out in the wasteland, it's uh, it gets real, real fast. And in these four, first four episodes, excuse me, I think that was a good place to end because I think she kind of got that arc. It's like, I think we all like to think that we're Lucy. We're trying to do the right thing and be diplomatic about it. But you're going to get your hands dirty real quick. And then let's be honest, we all just become the ghoul. <laughs> so we all really just anyone who's played fallout more than once, you kind of just become the ghoul after that point. So yeah, uh, it was cool to, to see that uh, kind of come to fruition and see all these other, yeah, many references that I'm, you know, to, to you guys who are like, Oh, it's, it's not going to make sense. If you see her banging on the door, trying to get to her dad and she can't. And I'm like, I'm freaking out. And I know he was too. Cause you're here. I know he was too. Cause I'm like, that happens in three. There's a, thing of glass between you and your dad and you just have to sit there and watch your dad die and you can't do anything about it and i'm like oh you brought that back that hurts thanks for that fallout thanks for giving me more trauma <laughs> Liam Neeson, no <laughs> not Liam yeah, I, uh, yeah you know me going into this I, I played all of 50 or 20 minutes of fallout I, the open world Fair. games have been hard to uh they haven't been easy to grab me i i, I like something specific you know me and jeremy play you, 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 do you know why there, do you know why? Because you will get sidetracked by bullshit every I'll get damn time. By bullshit. <laughs> was so like, yeah, I like those things. Like, I can jump in, play for a half hour, forty five minutes, just to kind of kill some time, and then go back to my daily life. But I, I haven't been able to play video games for ten hours straight since I was probably like twenty two. <laughs> this working that was working numbers years ago. Yeah, <laughs> get a, yeah, that was a long time. Ago. Well, it's like when I was twenty something, I had the video games that you guys had. Now there was very, wasn't That's very many open world games. Yeah, no. ah, are you sure? The first Fallout came out in nineteen ninety seven. Weren't you like you know twenty? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, I but even going into this kind of raw and not knowing a lot, I found myself really engrossed with it. My my only worry going into this whole thing was we've seen post apocalyptic stuff so much. Mm. I mean, it's been kind of a staple of filmmaking for at least since probably at least the seventies, kind of on a regular basis. So it, so it's really hard to to kind of send the whole thing out there. Yeah, yeah, the world's ended because of nuclear war or some kind of crazy shit going on. So now I, I have to find a way to get invested in this scrappy little band of people who just won't give up on being alive. And th- th- where this comes in, it's like, you do have this interesting character in Lucy who's it's kind of like the movie Blast of the Past for, from the 90s or whatever with, the uh, what's his name? Oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Brandon but, Fraser uh, and yeah, Alicia Fraser. Silverstone. Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of like a slightly more serious version of that. Like, he's been underground <laughs> for a long time. His whole life doesn't really know how the world really, really works. So it, it is kind of fun for that. Uh, you obviously have the cool character with Walton Goggins, who I had a feeling he was going to start to steal the show as soon as he showed up on screen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just in the, in the trailer, you, kind of yeah. like, you kind of felt like even the color scheme of him against everything else, because everything in this world is so so barren and colorless. I mean, you get to see very little color in this. He's got the red face like Red Skull. She And, and her, kind of the, like, the opposite of that, wearing the, the blue and gold, kind of, you know, is, 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 I mean, just the color schemes of these two characters are kind of, 
it just it's a visual show of a dichotomy between these two. But uh, yeah, I, I thought to myself, is, is this just going to be another post-apocalyptic thing? But I, I found myself enjoying the character work of all this and not really being wrapped up too much with the fact that it's in this apocalyptic world. That, that, like, like that's important to the story, but it's not like the only thing they want you to focus on. It's like the main visual. The main yeah. visual is some of the cool effects, is you know the giant bugs that they have to kill. There is a lot, some pre- really good pieces of dialogue in this first four episodes, really this entire series overall so far. Uh, yeah, they, they managed to kind of balance what is kind of a dreary, overdone you know, world that they that they built. They managed to balance all that out with some other really cool stuff that kept me engaged. Uh, and of course, you know, mech suits are always a good thing. You know, any guy dressed up in an exoskeleton, it's always gonna be, there, there's an inherent coolness to that. So even if you screw okay. that up a little bit, you're you're probably not that far off. Like an but Iron Man Mark One. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Mark One. Yeah. But the, let's talk about the cast for just a minute, and uh, I'll go to you first, uh, Brooding Gamer. Um, some names that are known for sure: Walton Goggins, already a star, been in a lot of things. Uh, so, but uh, you know, some other people like uh, Ella Purnell. On her way up, has been in some things, but not huge. Kyle McLaughlin, obviously, has been around for a long time. Uh, some people that we've seen in other things, but they're still relatively young and just waiting for the big break, and this might be it. Uh, what did you think of the mm-hmm. cast, and who stood out to you the most? Well, the cast, pretty damn good, in my opinion. There's only been one actor that I just I can't get behind, and I'll get to that here in a few, but like <laughs> everybody just... When you play, uh, so the best way, because you look at you look at Fallout, it's obviously a Bethesda game. You can look at, you can play a Fallout game and go, yep, that's a Fallout character. You can play Skyrim and go, yep, that's clearly a Skyrim character. Like, you, you can tell where these people come from, what genre of game they're in. And it's like everybody that is encountered in this show is someone that I could honestly see. If I were to play Fallout 3, New Vegas, or 4, I'd be like, yep, I, I could easily see you in there in your own quirk, in your own weird way. Like the shop owner, I, I do not know her Love name, her. unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I think her name is, just, I know in the show, I think it's just Ma. But yeah. she she was fan-freaking-tastic. The whole, like, the last, you just, <laughs> I thought she saw her shit's been dead. For, like, I, <laughs> I thought her you dipshits was all dead. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I loved That's her fair. in there. And I mean, obviously, uh, Cooper, the, uh, you know, the ghoul, he, I could not think of a better actor. I'm glad they didn't mm. grab Chris Pratt from another fucking project. <laughs> they they would have to. I mean, just with him on screen, like he looks fan freaking fantastic. This is the first time we've seen a ghoul on screen that's not, you know, every video game they they change how they look, and he looks. Yeah. They did an amazing job with how he looks, how he sounds, giving him even <clears throat> enough to where, like, you know, obviously. He doesn't have a nose, so when he says certain things, it kind of comes out as if you've got your nose plugged up. Now, obviously, filming, they probably had to put a green screen uh, mesh over his nose, so that mm. way, you know, pull a Voldemort on us. But, you know, <laughs> every like I say, every character that is encountered was great. Uh, the, I, I, there was even one uh, character is her brother, who the only thing I ever saw him in was freaking Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana, ago. yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I saw him on screen. I'm like, I'm not going to like him. And then not even halfway through the first episode, I'm like, okay, I like him. He's cool. Um, unfortunately, the only I, – I didn't even know how I'd feel about Lucy, but I ended up I, – I think she played – she's phenomenal. Um, she's a great actress, and she does great in this as – what any new player would be doing when you get out of the vault, you'd be like, I don't know, do I? Well, you obviously you start to follow. You don't want to kill just someone who runs up on you. You, you want to you, you try to talk to people before you find out are they going to pull a gun or a knife out on you. But and she does just that. She does. She is every new player to fall out. Um, yeah. Even in Elder Scrolls as well. You know, you do yeah. that. You come out and you're like, I'll try and simply just you know. I just, I'll in. just talk to him. I'm just gonna farm. I'm not gonna be a serial kid. Next thing you know, you're you're shooting everybody with a minigun just for looking at you funny. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the only actor that just I cannot get behind. I don't understand what the deal is. Whether actor or character is Maximus. I don't know his name. I can't even say I've ever seen him in anything prior to this. Um, in fact, I I've been wanting to look him up just to find out if the way he is in this show. Yeah, that guy uh, is the same in everything because he just <clears throat> the only time this guy ever actually seems legitimate when he's acting is when he's getting the shit beat out of him. 
When he's not, he's constantly looks like he's on something. He's confused. I mean, that's actually a good. It looks shot. like he's gonna cry at, at any like, moment. Yeah, like, like that's his face for most of the show. He, he the way he's he good. acts ninety yeah. percent of the show is like you're that kid in class who's too busy looking at the desk, and then the teacher's like, "Uh, you," and then you're like looking around the room like, "Oh shit, is that me?" Like he just seems like he's not ready to be in any shot that he's in. And then when he is trying to be like the whole thing with the uh, with Knight Titus sitting there kind of going off on him, he just looks confused. Like I was like, I feel like Mike Ty- Mike. Wow, <laughs> I knew I was not, not Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I would flip. That would have been wild. Like Mike Titus is all of us in that situation. It's like, what the fuck you doing, man? I need help, and you're just fucking standing there. Like, I just don't like him. I, that's the only actor of this entire show. I like. Some of the most rare. I like the what was that character Barv, whatever. Mom, oh, friend, the other the partner, guy in the whatever. shop. I like <laughs> her more than I like him, <laughs> and she's only in the shop for three seconds. He just there's no redeeming qualities to him so far. I I'm hoping season two does better for him, but I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, Tex, what about you? Uh, obviously, a, a pretty good cast. Like a couple of people really stand out. Who stood out to you the most? Yeah, I mean, also obviously Walter Goggins. I'm a big fan of Justified. I, I, I still need to catch that newest season that they did. I'm feeling it's probably not very. It's probably not as good as the original run of the show, but I still want to see it. But uh, he did well. I mean, the ghoul was the ghoul. Quick, the minute he became, he came into the show, he was my only reason for watching the show. I'll be real honest with you. But um, Ella Purnell as the lead is kind of funny. The last time I saw her was in a different apoc- apocalyptic thing, Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead that you know yeah. that came out on Netflix a couple mm-hmm. years ago. So I'm like, wait, so you went from getting your father and his team killed in Army of the Dead to now you're going into a new apocalypse where other people die. So her career kind of has a similar thing going here. But uh, yeah, I-, I have to agree with what uh, Gamer said here. Uh, the pawn shop lady... I was waiting for her to come out and say, Junior, get the saw, because you could put her in a Texas Chainsaw movie right now. Like, take that character and do not change anything. Keep the clothing. Put her in a, te- in a Texas Chainsaw movie, and she's one of the Hewitts or the Sawyers right fucking now. But, uh, you know, Kyle McLaughlin, he, he, he wasn't in this as much, but I think he probably acted the best out of anybody, especially within the Vault Dwellers. I hated most of the vault dwellers. Those are some communistic, hippie-looking douches. I'm like, I, I, I want all of you to die. Like, I'm like, you know, oh, well, the, the ideal thing to do. No, screw you. We're going to kill them. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Just everybody needs to die. That that was what I was hoping for. But, uh, yeah, Ella Purnell, she was, it, it, it was refreshing. This is how you do a female character right, where you're not pushing a Mary Sue type. We get a female character that is new to this world. She's she doesn't have all of the answers. She's not a Ray Skywalker, whoever the crap Palpatine, whatever, who just comes out of the shoot and she can solve all of the problems. She gets her ass kicked a few times along the way. She learns. She picks up as she goes. And apparently, that's you know that what like you know they were mirroring the games or whatever. But it was refreshing to see a realistic type character female lead that's not like i said mary said so i thought she did well but one of those things yeah jay how about you Uh, again a pretty loaded cast a couple of really good performances out this entire first season who stood out to you the most uh well obviously the dog because the dog is the best character in fallout (laughs) that was cool yeah i like and there and that's not up for debate or any discussion it's always the dog uh of course Uh. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to pick the dog every time. And as much as I, I think I watched somebody because I got, got back into this guy who does a lot of ranking things in video games and he ranked every dog from every single game. And I'm like, yeah, I forget how many there are. A lot of them are just called dog meat or dog. It's not the same dog, but, you know, that's not what we're here for. I mean, you even get a you get a cool half robot dog in New Vegas from an Elvis impersonator. Fucking cool is that. I was gonna say, I'm not sure that the dog in this show is actually canine. I got a feeling something else is coming down the road, but you know. 
That's more speculative that's, than anything. That's what I was kind of kind of thinking too, because I was getting a new Vegas map uh, where I'm like, wait a minute, did we put he uh, straight up gets stabbed with like a crocodile dundee blade and he just perks up like nothing happened. Okay. That's well, not fair. normal. That's that to is be a fair welcome to Fallout. I mean, yeah, I was like, that is <laughs> right. um, sometimes right. these right. game right. mechanics that they yeah. put in there, it does look a little goofy because I'm like, yeah. yeah. Your companion will, if right. you don't have a hardcore mode on, your companion will go down and they'll just be kind of like, ah, like, we have 12, th- this world has 12 pound cockroaches, let's be honest. So, I mean, yeah, we're, we're throwing like, all that out the window. <laughs> and you can just stab yourself with the little needle and you're fine. Like that, because she does yeah. that in the first episode. Like, she stabs it right well, into the, just to say, the wound. Even with Lucy in, in the first episode, she gets straight up gutted by that, yeah. you know, bad right. guy. And it's just, do, 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 everything's fine. That never happened, whatever. I was like, so, wait a minute. That, dude, you you weird. should play a Resident Evil game where you get your whole leg you chopped spray. off and you just reattach it. Oh, I have. Water on I it. have, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I was, I was waiting. You just pour some... You, know, you, you just pour some liquid on your arm and you're, you're back flying again. Yeah, I've done Everything's that. fine. I was waiting for somebody <laughs> yeah. to make the fucking joke in the, in the show about <laughs> the game. Trust me, you can cripple one of your limbs. If you just take a short little nap, it's fine. You'll wake up. You're fine. It's healed. You're good. <laughs> that's that's literally a mechanic. If you find better. a mattress no to worry. sleep on or a or a bed, yeah, no, just go to sleep seriously, and you will be fine when you wake up. I will say, if uh, you pay attention, funny. like it's one of those like you blink and you miss it. Anytime she has her pit boy, whatever she had recently been through, um, like I th- I don't it was like the fourth episode where they get into the 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 super duper mark. She leaves, and both of her arms are crippled. But I was yeah. like, when, when did she? And I'm like, but then I, you know, go back and watch. I'm like, yeah, she did get the shit beat out of her. And she had been thrown around. So, yeah, okay, maybe her arm well, crippled, I guess you would say. But yeah. it was cool just to see that little bit of, like, the the little vault boy reflecting like it would in the game anytime you take any significant damage or just based on how much health you have. Like, the, the instead of smiling, now you're frowning or you've got bandages wrapped around your head. And uh, I thought that was really neat little uh touch that they put into that well i wanted to say maybe she does it's a i keep going back to vegas and i i i think we all know and we've all just assumed that vegas is canon and we're kind of like yeah but it is but it kind of is and it's the arkham origins of the arkham series we're like yeah you're here but you don't get to sit with us you know what i mean (laughs) well they alluded to that a little bit like i guess at the end of the last episode i don't want to get too much well yeah i'm like we're not there yet but i'm like red where they were like there's some visuals they in the finally, last couple of scenes where they oh, kind of allude to Vegas. Oh, I freaked so, the fuck. That is Vegas straight up through and through. And I can already tell you that was already coming from a character you saw about 10 minutes before that. I was like, oh, oh, okay, we're doing this. So they did say that, yes, Vegas, the events of Vegas is canon. But then the problem with a game like this where you choose what faction you want to side with and what what outcome you want, I'm like, right. But which of like the five endings of Vegas is the one that is canon? This is the pro- I'm we'll get to that in the second half, but I'm like, we have a bigger issue here to talk about. But I have my theories. Um, but I wanted to say anyway about Vegas. She might have a she might have have the small frame perk because I mean she is a pretty tiny girl. So with that perk, you do get more agility, but your limbs are more susceptible to being broken. Which you know that's that's the trade off. You get an, another point in agility because she is pretty. She's light on her feet. But I mean, yeah, you get the shit kicked out of you, and you're gonna have a bad day. So, um, yeah, no, I I loved Ella Purnell because uh, I can tell that she not only along with you know, uh, uh, what's not what's his name, Jonathan, the guy that uh, Nolan that did a couple of these, yeah, uh, big fans of the game. Uh, he's played it. They told her, like, you don't have to play. And she was like, no, I want to. Like, she really wanted to play the game. She's like, I want to get into this. I want to see it. I want to feel what, the, you know. And she's like, I, this is this moment isn't lost on me. When I know what happens, I put this vault suit and this pit boy on. Like, that's important. So, like, I, like, you know, I could tell she really wanted to respect where this was coming from. And I think she knocked it out of the park. Uh, that's the heavy hitter perk. I'm going to keep throwing these at you left and right. <laughs> For the next two days, it won't stop. <laughs> it will not stop. Um and of course, Walton Goggins, like probably one of your biggest stars in this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not mad. I love constantly going back to him, and because he is one of your ties to the pre uh, pre war era before all this happened. So, I mean, that's kind of a badass character to 
to use just when he's Cooper Howard and then when he becomes the ghoul. Um, seeing this whole thing unfold. Um, yeah, obviously the, the, the junk lady is the fucking best. I, I don't even care. She, that is something that I, I agree with what he said. Like you would definitely hear somebody in a gunfight be like, I'll give you 30,000 cash for whoever kills that son of a bitch, but you don't get anything if I get him first. You know what I mean? Shit like that. <laughs> uh, and I'm kind of on the same side as seemingly everyone. Uh, about Max, I don't really get what that was about. I, I kind of get maybe he's trying to prove something or something that he, I mean, he kind of had like his Mandalorian moment, like where he got found by the, the Brotherhood guy. And now he wants to prove himself or do something. And I, I'm not going to, you know, we've all been that person. That's that first kind of uh, character arc for you when you're like, you see somebody with some really cool armor and a gun. You're kind of like, I could kill him. You just take it. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. You know what I mean? I so I get that. That's the yeah. You want to run around in the power armor. You, you know you want to just put that bitch on like Iron Man and just go for it. Um, but I I will bring to the table a defense that I saw on Reddit. I think maybe and I sent Frank these things. They came out with what all these characters' special stats would be, and I was completely right. I think he his intelligence stat is got awful low i thought his luck perk would be higher because of the idiot savant perk where like you basically bullshit your way out of everything and you get experience just for being just doing dumb things he does somehow get out of like a lot of really odd situations so although I, I think lucy's luck perk was a lot higher i'm like that is also kind of fair because she she would have been dead like five minutes after she left the vault if she didn't have that kind of a high luck skill so yeah, I thought maybe because the way, again, you get to have a low intelligence and a higher luck to have the idiot savant perk uh, work to your advantage, which is what I thought Max was was doing. But it's it's very close. Um, and he definitely had a high luck perk because let's all be honest here, and Gamer knows what I'm talking about. There is no way you two-shotted a Yaogwai, a mm. radioactive bear, in two shots with a dinky 10 mil pistol. Yeah. Those were, that was a VATS crit. That was two critical hits in a row. And you guys were lucky. I was There's disappointed no because when he <laughs> shot it in the face, it stopped. And I'm like, please tell me it's going to, that's like, it just took a minute to like, go. The you see his eyes like, <laughs> he like went to the camera and then wah, just mauls him. That's right what I thought it was going to do. And then it just killed over. I'm like, God damn. Okay. <laughs> I mean, a real bear don't go down that quick, even if you shoot it in the head. Yeah, especially a radiated bear. I'm just now, it's, like... now you know, Yogi's now upgraded a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't but, preventing, uh, we ain't preventing uh, nuclear say, forest fires here. I have to say that 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 whole scene was probably because you know you get this guy who is a literal Greek god at this point in this armor, and just all of a sudden, the, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Well, like, that's a fair. <laughs> That was, I mean, to be that was an actual reaction. Well, it was, it was Michael Rappaport, which is basically that's kind of all he ever plays. Yeah, <laughs> when you hear that sound, when you certain creatures have a very particular sound, obviously, yeah, the Yagwai is just a bear, so it's gonna sound like a bear. But if you're playing Fallout and you hear that bear, typically you're like, ah, shit, you're pulling something out, <laughs> waiting, fuck, 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 I'm running the other, yeah. And I mean, that's why I'm hoping, like, you know, and there's and that thing is scary as fuck, it's big, it's you know, it's ugly. And but that's there's not even the worst thing that's exactly. out there. Exactly. There's always something. It's kind of like there's always a bigger fish. There's always a bigger fish that will eat you. And I mean, that's Which why I'm glad see. they they officially <laughs> confirmed one of the the creatures that I'm absolutely the most in love with will be coming in season two, and why they held off on it. But that will be a whole discussion for later. Mm. But um, it's it's always like that. That's the one thing I focus on the most. And I mean, Grim here will completely understand that on my point that i i always love the most is the fauna everything you're dealing with around you like your environment and it's important to to focus on that because you know it's like yeah anybody can go out in the desert and okay without you know it's just another mad max clone and you know we have a lot of those you know you you go out there and it's like yeah anybody can throw on a, a gas mask or wear a, a leather belt on their face and scream and 
hump a tree in the area, you have a Mad Max villain. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But I mean, typically Mad Max, I don't know, did Mad Max have any weird mutated dog creatures? If you look at, if you look at Road Warrior, like the outfit he's wearing is very much, that's a Raider. Yes. Fallout. And like him walking with the dog is always the iconic thing we see in Fallout is like, we saw the ghoul and the dog walking together. We've seen, you know, Fallout 4, Fallout 3. We always have the dog walking beside you. So, yeah. And I, I know Mad Max has always been like a very heavy inspiration. And oh, yeah, always, there's a lot of, yeah, they lot always of do that. Now, if they would have just put the dog next to her walking out of the vault, boom, you got Fallout Like 4. this shot right here in the middle, you would just had the dog next to her. Like, yep. yeah, that would have been it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I like I said, I, I about cried. When I saw, let's, let's go back about 10 years, 2015, when I saw the first trailer for Fallout 4. And the ending shot is the dog sniffing around the power armor. He goes around the corner and you see the lone wanderer come around the corner, the main character. And he just scratches him on the neck and he just says, let's go, pal. And it cuts the black and says, Fallout. I about fucking lost. Oh, mind. I remember. Yeah, I got chills just even thought. Just I, three I words. He just says, let's go, pal. Job when off. that trailer dropped. Oh, that was the best. But yeah, uh, I... Uh... God. Hold on, let, let me let me give my thoughts to the cat for a quick one. Okay, yeah. on. But uh, I look obviously Ella Purnell, Walton Goggins kind of carry the whole thing. I get it, yeah. that's fine. Kyle McLaughlin, I, I find his character very interesting because I feel like mm-hmm. I, I feel like a lot of the purpose of this season was not necessarily to expose him as somebody who has kind of been in on it from the jump, but well, I think it's to smile, set him though. up. I think it's to set him up for being what ultimately may be the big bad in this whole thing. Like, he may be the thing yeah. that's behind all this shit. Maybe not that's what the way it was designed to be from the beginning, but he's going to be the one that's just like, okay, I'm the one person left from Vault Tech that can really kind of control this shit. So I'm going to make myself the Emperor Supreme of all this. Uh, another thing I liked was, uh, I liked, uh, what's his name, Mo- Moises Arius? I, the only thing I'd ever really heard of him that he was in was... Uh, the Hannah Montana. That's the only thing I never heard of. Not that I ever watched that show a lot. But I, I found it really interesting that in the his character arc and the character arc for uh, for Aaron Mott and for Maximus was kind of was kind of sim, uh, similar in the fact that you, you don't really expect much of them in the beginning of the show. They're both mm-hmm. kind of dumbasses. They're not. They don't look like they're the smartest. They're not really the the best at anything that they're doing. But as the things go on, as as time goes on over the course of this entire series in the vault. He seems to be the only one that, maybe not the only one that sees it, but the only one that's willing to take it to the next level and look into Do it. Something. Like, hey, wait a minute. There's something happening here that isn't what I've always thought was supposed to be what was happening. So he's the one that decides to go over to Vault 32 to see what happened, and he sees those things. He's the one that's like, he's doing some of the investigating to figure out how did that door even get open? It was my mom's key that got the, got the door open. Things like that, where everybody else either, obviously some people don't want to look into it, but other people are just oblivious. Mm-hmm. And, and it kind of makes sense, but I mean, it's like nobody's got like a thought process <laughs> behind it all, except for this kid in that damn vault. Uh, the other one is I, I do like Maximus's character a little bit. I, I think I kind of looked at him at first this, uh, the same way that I looked at, you know, Walmart Captain America and Captain America or the Captain America <laughs> and the whatever the hell that TV show was. Yeah, uh, whatever that was. Falcon, Falcon Winter Soldier. Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah, that one. I kind of looked at him the same way in that, you know, like, you know, Wyatt Russell comes out as Captain America and instantly all of the United States of America and all of the Earth and most of the other eight planets in the solar system all hated him. But it's like his his growth was something that we didn't really see coming. And I think that we saw him grow from this this boy who was found in the in the fridge. I don't know if you caught that part, Jeremy. I don't know if that was an intentional... Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Let me explain to you that that actually gets deeper. Okay. Well, okay. I did so want. That might be I didn't want to tweet. <laughs> I didn't want to tweet Jeremy when I rush up. Like, ah, Indiana Jones, poor fucker. They, they, they nicked the bridge. No, that's not. But, that's uh, not why it's funny. I'll tell you why it's funny. In a <laughs> but I, but I, I, I saw his growth. I mean, obviously, uh, he was opportunistic. I think more than anything else. He's just like, you know, I want to be more. Nobody believes in me. I don't quite believe in myself. And then, you know, his knight gets killed. He's like, well, I have this armor in front of me. I'm going to get the respect that I that I feel like I deserve by completing this mission. And, of course, nothing goes the way it's necessarily supposed to go. But I mean, it all works out kind of in the end. But uh, I, I saw his growth through that. Like, his confidence grew. I think some, his abilities, he probably already, already always had, but maybe he didn't realize. I think they kind of came into perspective for him. So his personal growth, I thought, was pretty good. Uh, 
the one character I want more of is Michael Emerson. I mean, I was a big fan of the uh, person of interest when it was on the air. I love mm. that show. I think he was one of the best parts of it. I'm, I'm pretty certain that we're going to see him in a lot of flashbacks moving forward. We will probably get a second season of this. I, don't, I haven't yeah. heard anything yet, but I mean, I'm pretty sure it's coming. Uh, I, I would hope that there's going to be some flashbacks. I was actually really disappointed that like he's in one episode and, and by the end of the episode, she's already chopped his head off and it's carrying it through the desert. I'm like, I really <laughs> like already. <laughs> like, well, I, given, I didn't quite understand killing him already, but whatever. Yeah. Given that he was from, I mean, you don't just bomb drop that the enclave is a thing. And again, if you know what I'm talking about, that isn't just something you just kind of on the by mention. So the the enclave is one of the major major factions in this game uh that does does play a pretty pretty big role uh in this this series so i feel like we'll have more of him for sure i, I mean obviously it's gonna have to be the flashbacks so his head yeah. is just rattling around somewhere if, if his head is even left actually they pulled the stuff out of his head so really don't even need his head anymore but uh, yeah yeah i I was really impressed with a lot of the performances in this. But to me, like I said, I really like Maximus is the one with the most room for growth here. I think he could very easily go from one of the one of the characters, like like Brady said, that kind of annoys you to maybe ultimately being the hero of this whole thing. Or or one of or one of the people who who does something really awesome to kind of to kind of bring this whole thing to a culmination, whenever that may be. But uh, let's talk about the plot now. And obviously, uh if you've played the game, it's roughly the same plot. I'm gonna to go to Jeremy on this one first because I, I do want to, I do want to try to have him compare a little bit of this plot to some of the stuff in the game and how it lays out. Uh, okay. Jeremy, what did you think of the plot? How closely does it resemble the game so far? Well, <clears throat> as we said, it is kind of its own story, but obviously, it is going to have a lot of connections to previous games. Um, the biggest one that. Uh, I obviously noticed was right there when you see uh, her and her dad. Um, that's a big plot point of Fallout 3 where um, I even so far as to comparing Vault 101, which is where you're at in 3, to Vault 33 is that Vault 101 is that you're always told like you're born in the vault, you die in the vault. No one comes in, no one goes out. So you're like, okay, that's your life. You That's what you know. And then when suddenly you wake up and you're like 22 years old and all of a sudden you wake up to alarms going off and your best friend's standing there over top of you like, hey, your dad's gone. Your dad's missing. And you're like, how? What? When did he leave? How did he leave? You know what I mean? So it's kind of that same, you know, it's just all of a sudden now you got to go find your parental figure who does have a big part to play, you know, as we do see, which we'll discuss in the second second half. Uh, has a bit, pretty big part to play in this uh, in this whole story, um, and I think. Uh, and speaking of Liam Neeson uh, playing your dad in three, that one I think they kind of hinted at it, and I'm kind of surprised, unless it was supposed to be a cameo, because I'm like, why did you just specifically stop this whole little town meeting to focus on this guy coming in and saying, "Hey, uh, by the way, guys, the water chip's broken," so carry on. I'm like. <laughs> are we not going to address that that happened like wait a minute um that's actually kind of twofold uh that's the problem in the first game the very very first game is your water chip's broken and you got to go get a replacement uh in three uh your dad's missing because he's a pretty vital in, uh part of this um operation that is going to because obviously as we saw uh, i think what in, that might have been episode four uh, when Ella Purnell finally like has to just give in and drink this radiated piss mm -hmm. water, basically. Obviously, in the classic line, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. I'm like, right, because it's fucking irradiated and you're going to get sick unless you're used to it. And even then, you're probably still not used to it. So your dad's working on this big project. So it's in... like going to Cancun. Don't drink water. Yeah, you, just, water you just don't drink. I mean, can you so imagine that? Dad, don't drink dad I've lived. I I, I've never played Fallout, but I've drank the water in Cancun. Don't do it. It doesn't go well. You came pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it doesn't end well. So your uh, your dad in three has got this big operation going on inside the uh, Jefferson Memorial to basically be able to purify all the water in the D.C. area so that people can you know drink from it. And that's why I mentioned the Enclave, because, of course, the moral choices are... So you get your ass jumped by the Enclave, and they tell you, hey... You could do that, 
Or you could hear us out and you still do it, but you install a little gene into it that kills anything that drinks the water that isn't pure. So anyone basically who's already sick, already radiated, probably you know has cancer, has all these ghouls, uh, any animals, it's all going to die. I'm like, that's kind of a scorched earth way to look at it, but okay, thanks. I'll consider that. No, and I burned their whole place. Actually, no, I let out a death claw and I burned that bitch to the ground as I walked out is what I did. I said, fuck the enclave. I'm not dealing with them and we'll probably see more of that. And I hope we do. Um, yeah, I, without spoiling something in the, in the second half, we'll talk about it later. There's a big fucking bomb drop that you just gave us about. Um, obviously everybody's favorite little underdog is new Vegas. Um, Ooh, I'm trying, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to remember where I know where four ended. It ended with her, you know, going through the, uh, Super Duper Mart. Uh, the thing I will say that is different that I like that they added uh, was to the ghouls that it gave kind of an extra that we see Walton Goggins character. He's constantly he's taking you know hits of the uh, of the drug to keep him from going feral because that's the thing is if you haven't caught on the blatant racism that, it, that people have towards ghouls because I kind of get it if you saw these zombies like feral just mindless zombies coming at you. I mean, you wouldn't want to take the chance. And again, if anyone has ever traversed the Underground Railroad Metro in Fallout 3, tell me you didn't go through that without shitting your pants a little bit. You ghouls are <laughs> fucking terrifying. You keep it in the dark. You can't see them. You can't. You hear them, but you can't fucking see them. And then they just <laughs> come right, right in your face. I, I swear this game and this show started to border. I mean, the game for sure, but started to border on being like a horror game or a horror show because it's but it's got the dark humor to balance it out. So, you know, like carrying around someone's head. Like, <laughs> yeah. Lollipop chainsaw. She stuff. was surprisingly she, okay with that, too. I think she, <laughs> like, I think she was okie dokie about it. She, she was like, I was expecting her to be like, even like carrying it like by the hair. And she, no, like, but that's the thing. I love that almost, fire. that yeah. almost just like she's just blatantly just like, she's got a chainsaw on her hand. She's just like, Okay, I guess. Okay, so. okay, okay, if you say she, so. She did seem to climatize to the chaos of the outside world very quickly. I, I was I like, mean, I feel like it, it, sh it should have been kind of a running thing for most of the first season, like maybe the final episode. She kind of, she kind of just like, well, fuck, if this is what the world is and whatever. But she did kind of climatize very quickly, which I thought she, was I odd, think she but. started to get, I, I think when I was looking at her and I'm like, uh, we all saw that scene first with uh, the ghoul, Max and Lucy all in the town. Uh, town square there that i'm like i'm watching her try to like put this tranquilizer up to a ghoul and try to reason with him and he's just sitting there just like <laughs> like really bitch just like head tilt <laughs> i that's why i'm like okay i love him but i'm like watching her try to reason with him i was already thinking through game game stats i'm like oh she's got a high speech skill probably not a lot of charisma so it's not landing it's there's there's no intimidate extra intimidation perk or any persuasion perk because it's not fucking working so i'm like yeah she's trying but it's you're gonna have to figure something else out because that ain't the way well um, let me move on to brady real quick if somebody had thoughts on the plot yeah. brady brady what'd you think uh, overall plot of the show not so much a comparison against the games really but just just sticking to the plot of the series what do you think of it uh, I think it was pretty good, uh, to be honest. I was I was a little nervous at first that we were following the games. Um, right. That's the only comparison I would make is I thought we were starting to cover that, and I was like, "And eh, don't don't make a series about the video game. Don't make the series about a particular video game because yeah. then you lose it. Make it your own. Make it like its own video game." And they mm. they did. They did a little bit. I'm going to call it like it's, you know, this is Bethesda's Frankenstein project because they took a bit of all the games, put it into one. And then there you go. And then go ahead and let's let's now make a new story to this, because trying not to spoil anything further into the show, I don't think we've had anything like this, this involved, this like big. So it's it, it was good to see, you know, like everybody's got it. Everybody. Uh, has that, you know, you have all the, so many TV shows where it's like, well, I've got to, the plot, I got to go find my dad. And then you somehow get in this weird, wacky situation where you start running into all these extra characters and all these extra ex situations and all that. But they, they played it off a lot better than what I was expecting. I was expecting a lot. 
I was honestly expecting this to not do as good as it did. So I'm glad, absolutely glad I was wrong. Um, but, you know, I think the plot did a really good job at giving us what we what we wanted. You know, you, if, if I were to watch this not knowing what Fallout was, you know, like, I, I, you know, going into it, not being a gaming, a, a gamer fan or anything, I would, yeah, I'd be like, I don't really know what it is, but I am enjoying it. But I mean, they did a good job at making sure, you know, exactly what you're watching when it's on there. I mean, hell, she never takes off the vault suit. Uh, I really wish she would have done the more where it was. She had it at her waist where she had like the pauldron. She had like the thing on her shoulder. Um, I was very excited to see that. And then I swear like the next episode, she's got it right back zipped up. I'm like, come on, damn it. Like it's a good look, but, uh, yeah, I'm I'm very I'm very very pleased if I can learn to talk tonight. Very <laughs> pleased with the with how the show the story is going and how uh, the plot of everything. Because I mean, there's only so much you can do in a Fallout thing where it's okay. Right now, a lot of factions getting together and or going at this particular one person, which I, I feel like we're not talking enough about him. I he he really needed more of a of a big, uh, I mean, he's there and he's there in pieces with us. So, I mean, we get, you know, yeah, he was ahead of the game. Um, but, but, uh, a little, one, a little wonder, I think, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> he was all brains and no, <laughs> like, no, just, uh, just, I, just, I, by, just by the skin of his nose. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I really like just, just the way that they incorporated him where now it's like, their own spin on okay so you're a courier and you gotta you know it's one of those stupid escort missions but there's a there's a big catch to this escort mission where yeah you're just gonna carry mm-hmm. the guy's head the whole time and i love how even then the head just kind of became its own character where it's like you know mm-hmm. her sitting there at a fire just petting the head for no particular fucking reason just like they're there or you know this head becoming a chew toy for a gulper. It was she you know, even at one point picks it up and starts examining it. She's like, "What's the big deal about you?" Just kind of looking at it like it was some yeah, yeah. like he's gonna answer her. It's or a something. human head. <laughs> well, going back and watching it the second time, I didn't even realize when he walks away in the night that the back of his neck was glowing. Mm. I, I I don't know if I was too busy looking at the I dog was... or what, but I was like, "Oh shit, his neck is glowing." <laughs> we all love the dog. I'm I was like, watching what? the dog. I'm like, if that dog dies, I'm gonna fucking riot. Like, <laughs> No, Fallout Damn. wouldn't kill the dog. <laughs> That's okay. There's a perk for that. It's called the Not puppies the perk. If your dog dies, you go back to your vault and you get one of the puppies. And I'm like, no, it's not the same. Like he said, <laughs> you ain't him. I'm just saying, you ain't him, dog meat. You ain't no, him, no. dog meat. And I was like, hmm. Well, let me let me get Texas thought real, uh, thoughts on the plot real quick. Tex, uh, post apocalyptic. I don't know if there was enough uh, enough blood and special <clears throat> effects for you. I mean, the one scene where they there was they blood, guts, and tits in this show. Yeah. I don't know why he didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know if there was <laughs> enough to satisfy Tex. But what did you think of the plot overall? Sex blood. But the violence was okay. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a violence and gore. Like, I'm picky. You can't just put it in there and I'll be happy. I mean. The fact that we got a set scene and, and all we got was man ass. I mean, what, I mean, come on, like we, you know, we've got Ella Purnell. She's an attractive lady. Show a little skin. What? Come on, what's the problem? But I mean, plot wise, Jeremy, done. you'll know what I'm talking about when I say this. This had a very, very similar vibe to Walking Dead. I think it was season five, the Terminus season, when everybody was separated and they were all trying to get to Terminus. Like, yeah, yeah. there's a lot going on. And everybody's separate, but somehow it's all about one thing. They're all like going this, towards the same, yeah. Right. Like, there's like five different stories going. But it's, it's the editing is kind of clunky, how they put all this together. I, I feel like like you, you, I feel like they could have spent the whole first episode just on the vault people. Then the second episode, the Brotherhood of Steel. You know, the third episode, the goal, if it was edited differently, this would have been a lot better show, but to me, it's kind of all over the place. And I mean, not saying it's bad. It's just because, like I said, I like a lot of what this show offers from the world, the music, the, mm. some of the kills were pretty cool. Like um, 
when the guy gets the the gun stabbed through his mouth and he's being used as a human shield, I was like, okay, brought yeah. points for that. That was that was that was creative. I like stuff like that. Um, but plot wise, overall, it was just like. I, I can tell whoever made this was a hardcore fan because it's like we were texting about yesterday when we didn't go live. They went like real heavy on the member berries on this stuff. Like obviously, <laughs> the, obviously you have to cater to your fan base and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Everything should do that. But for someone of a more of a casual acquaintance to this, there was a lot that I felt like I missed watching this because there's a lot of like lingering shots on stuff or there's stuff that will happen within the plot and the story. I'm like, that, that feels like it's important, but I don't think I'm understanding the whole picture here because I, I haven't spent 50 hours in front of a television with a controller in my hand. So I feel like the plot kind of suffers for it. I mean, at its heart, it's pretty simple. It's a girl trying to find her dad in the, in the post nuclear apocalypse world. Pretty simple. Like Frank said earlier, it's been done a million times. Where I feel like they lose it is they try to cram too much into a time space and they don't edit it properly. I think they're, I know Jonathan Nolan, he's a talented guy, but I think this, I think this needs to re edit to be better. But I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, I, I love the plot in that it, I, I've noticed that as I got done watching the last episode, I feel like this entire season was a lot of setup. Because, yes, there's, there's the stuff that happens the first episode or two. She wants to go mm -hmm. find her dad. And there's this this journey, but it's like there's so much more that could potentially be told about this this whole, not just with Lucy, but, I mean, like, obviously we're not done with Kyle McLaughlin's character. There's a lot more to be done mm -hmm. with him. There's Ooh. more growth that's going to happen with, with Maximus. I mean, Lucy's journey is not going to anytime soon. I the, the last episode of Walton Goggins says, "Where's my fucking family?" It's like, have you wondered, like, wait, where, where have they been this whole time? I was like, I was wait, kind of, I was assuming they were just they had just kind of died, but I'm like, wait a minute, there's there's obviously a bunch of other vaults around the country, so could they be in one of those? Are they in one of those cryo chambers that we that we saw later on in the series? Buds, buds. Uh, I was because as soon as he said that, I was like, oh wait a minute, they are probably still out there somewhere. That's something that drives him. And then we're gonna, of course, he's gonna eventually find them at some point over the course of the series. Right? He, he would have given up a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is is his wife still gonna love him despite the fact that he's irradiated, missing a nose, and all and all red school? Yeah, so you, we've seen Deadpool. It's a face you'd <laughs> spit on. It's will okay. he uh, yeah. still love his wife when he finds her? Yeah. I mean, that well, was I mean, the line. He, like, would you still will be the same worthy? thing? Yeah, yeah, like, will he deem himself worthy? So, I mean, the worst possible. See, I, I thought it was a lot of setup. So, I, I thought this entire season, as I was watching the last episode, I was like, I feel like this is always the introduction to a lot more. And and I thought to myself, hey, that's kind of cool because there is a lot to be explored in this. I mean, first, they've got what, oh, five, six yeah. games out? What, uh, five, six games? Is that, what, is that where we're at now? Hold on, hold on, hold on. One, two, Brotherhood, Tactics, three, four, Vegas, 76. 76. There's eight. So eight. we're at eight games. So it's not like well, technically not a lot Fallout of... Shelter, which is nine, but that's a mobile game. We don't like we don't play mobile games here. Yeah, so it's it's, it's not like there isn't enough to pull off of <laughs> to make this a good like five six seasons. Oh, yeah. of good storytelling. Uh, also, I I have no idea. Jeremy and Bruno Gamer would know better than me. I mean, at this point, has there been an ending to the storyline of the games? Even uh, no. <laughs> because you know we're we're talking about you know we talked no. about Last of Us how the games that story that storyline has never really ended the games either so it's like how can we imagine where the where the series is going to end at any point that's but uh, I thought there was a lot of setup here that was very interesting I'm interested to see think more about her dad and his larger role in all this I'm interested to see how she reacts to all this because I mean obviously at the end of the show she's found out a lot of things there's an interaction between her and her dad she learns a lot and uh, we'll go into that in more detail tomorrow. You know, Walton Goggins, Maximus's growth. I mean, there's there's so many, there's still so much story to be told here. I, I I was happy they didn't try to tell it all in one eight episode arc, but at the same time, I'm like, I, I do kind of want to know more. I don't want this to stretch out like Stranger Things, where we get five seasons yeah. in the course of 37 years or some shit like that. I'm, I'm hoping they get to it a little bit quicker than that. But I mean, making shows on streaming services is a lot different than making shows on broadcast TV anymore. So, the so we'll see. The problem is, like I said, each game, uh, and I, I don't think I'd want them to do this kind of like, um, what's that show? Uh, American Horror Story, where it's like an anthology thing and each season's different. 
Because I'm like, really, each game is its own little story of like, this is what happened to this particular part of the, the U.S. with this character. And the problem is, like I said, as you can have... What? Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, it can be American Horror Story as long as Ryan Murphy stays the fuck away from as far as possible. <laughs> fuck that guy. I hate him. I feel like I'm supposed to... See? I feel like I'm like, was I supposed to understand what that meant? Okay. Um... Ryan Murphy's the creator of American Horror Story. He's oh. he's the brain behind all of the seasons. I so. I think yeah. I watched one and two, and then I don't think I've watched it since. So I honestly have no fucking idea. Um, yeah, he's he's one of those guys like, oh, I have a really great idea, and it starts off great, but by episode four, he's lost the plot and doesn't care to find it. It just kind of ends. It's it doesn't go well. Right. So well, yeah. Well, no, I mean, and this this was made by. Your executive producer was Todd Howard, who you know has made the last like three or four games. So, you know, you, you got the right people in the in the right seats, as as we've been saying. Um, the pro, like I said, the problem is though with the games is like you can have different outcomes. Like in Fallout Three, and I mean I want to spoil anything for anybody. But I'm just saying, you could either die, or you could not die. I mean the the plot still might happen, but there's two vastly different outcomes. Vegas, they introduced all these factions. I'm like, you can go with several different factions in that game. There is a fail safe because when your mind start, when they give you this much freedom, your mind starts to roll like mine does, where I'm like, wait a minute. I could kill every single faction in this game. Then what are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, no, they thought of that. They thought of a fucking psychopath like me. And they're like, no, there's a fail safe to where that will be the default ending if you decide to go that route, which I did. To success, I might add, it was very hard, but I did do it. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I did. I did do it. It was. It was kind of hard. But Vegas does have a weird. There's, there's a cap glitch where you can basically have unlimited money, but that's neither here or there. That I may have gone to the best gun shop and got all the biggest and best guns, and I may have just murdered everything in my path. So, with my newfound wealth, uh, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, no, sex is like hands. <laughs> Hey, if I, because I'm like, like I, said, I can see right now in the corner. Is there any no other way to really play if that is an option? I'm just saying. No, it is. I'm saying you can do that. That's the thing. There is so, <laughs> I mean, you could change the whole course of something by you can kill just any, just by any, any character you want. That's the thing. And I can see in the corner right now underneath uh, on the side here, there's someone live playing Fallout 3 for the first time. And I'm like, see, this is what it did. It gave p other people a chance to now experience this game or people like me who's played it 30,000 times. I'm like, I'll go back and do it again. Maybe I'll do a psychopath run, and maybe Tex will enjoy me me killing every single thing in the wasteland. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hey, just straight up Megan, everybody. But that's that, that's I my will, vote. <laughs> I it's a specific order of how something happened that I got very lucky that I thought about it. I'm like, oh no, I could do this now, and then you know. Uh, and speaking of that, no, you can't make a barbed wire baseball baseball bat in Fallout Four, and I did name it Lucy. Oh. You can name weapons. So I named it Lucille, and the best part was it was a special bat, and it did 50% more damage to humans. I'm like, it's perfect. It's Lucille. That's it. If you could give me the ghoul, and I know you'd have to you know, cross the streams here, but place Negan in this world and have him be a ghoul with the ghoul, that, that, that'd be the greatest tag team ever. Like, that's, take that's my money. I'll, just, I'll throw him up. Yeah. Uh, oh no! Oh, seriously, like Megan, and I'm not. I'm not talking pussified. I'm sorry, Megan. Megan, that's like straight up taking mofos and banging their wives in front of them. Megan, the cool version. So you know that Megan. But, oh, yeah, things man. Um, but let's. Uh, I, I want to basically turn the next couple of uh, spots of this rundown over to the to, to Jeremy and Brady uh, because th this is going to be well out of the the scope of what Tex and I know about the game. <laughs> Uh, how right. does this compare to the game? I'll start with you first, uh, Brady Gamer. I'll start with you yeah. first. Uh, comparisons to the game, what stood yeah. out to you as really blatant, obvious comparisons to the game? Where do I start? <laughs> well, right uh, there at the beginning, where the right. things went boom. <laughs> well, Fun fact, like, the Great War actually only lasted two hours. I'm like, well, no shit. When you nuke the entire world, it probably happened yeah. very fucking fast. Well, <laughs> that I was mean, it. Well, hang on. Hang, hang on, Brett. Uh, real quick, before y'all go any further, I do want to bring up how funny timing a nuclear 
apocalypse show is out considering the shit that's going on in the real world. I feel like they either planned this perfectly or this is the greatest accident ever. Because we're like on the verge of this as well. There was and a lot of writing in show happens, so. There was a lot of writing in this yeah. where I yeah. agree with Tex where it's like, ah, they're, they're aware. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the genius of it. Like I said, it wasn't crammed down our throat. Right. I mean, it was the whole point of, yeah. I mean, we'll again discuss this in the second half. Yeah. It doesn't matter. War never changes. Yeah. This will still fucking happen. It doesn't, you can't. Wipe anyway, the sorry to interrupt, but Go ahead. I just wanted to drop that. We're I just wanted to drop that happenstance of maybe this is predictive programming just saying i don't know but either way y- y'all go ahead and nerd out i'll show you it, golden rule motherfucker you will get sidetracked by bullshit every time. that's our new that's our new squirrel moment you will get sidetracked every time uh, yeah. this this whole series like it's like me with jurassic park i could go on nine different tangents and um, but Not comparing it quests. to the games, I mean, it like I said, it feels like you're playing like I'd say Fallout Five. Like it, it, if they were yeah. to say, I mean, it definitely feels like Fallout Four, hundred percent. But know. um, if I mean you, geez, well, like I said, where do I start? I mean, there's just so much to it that like, you know, there's so many things where I'm like, okay, that's you know, okay, that's been pulled from Fallout unfortunately i am not 100 percent familiar with fallouts one and two but like with three i'm like okay yeah. that's from three that's from four that's obviously like sunset sarsaparilla you oh, see yeah. several of those i'm like fallout new vegas okay that's mm-hmm. great um there's a couple times when you see like a death claw skull on the ground and i'm like okay so yes. we're focusing on like if or when that time comes when we see those we'll be looking at the design based off the more modern fallout not some new weird take on it like they did with uh like with the gulper because in the games the gulper is just a large salamander in this it's this weird i mean it's still a salamander but it's got like fingers coming out it's like a giant oxalata with finger yeah that i mean and i I think by all means have your own take on it have some fun with it you know this is the first time we've ever seen these creatures in existence on tv so Yeah. yeah let's let's take our spin on it um and just being able to i mean they they've changed they really didn't do anything that was like oh my god this changes everything in the fallout universe right um so i was very happy with that but like it's just comparing to the games it's just i mean honestly it just makes me and like thousands of other people go back and start replaying Mm -hmm. um through some of the games like i'm gonna do it I've already started. I mean, I'm currently in Fallout Four, replaying that right now. But like, I need I, to get I'm in three, in three in New Vegas. But it's I, I'm very happy. I think it compared very well. I think it, it, like I said, if you go into this show not knowing what Fallout is, you still like Tex. You still kind of have that where it's like, okay, yeah. With like he said, you know, there's still it could have been edited a little bit differently. I do agree oh, yeah. in that mindset that you know maybe we should not have focused so freaking heavily on like Maximus at the time, and then like you know when we get to the ghoul, he has maybe a total of what f- 10, 15 minutes, and they're like that's it. But yet we got almost a half hour with Maximus over o- almost an hour with with Lucy. And everything, but like you know, comparing to the games in the sense with like that, looking at like the vaults, you know, like Jeremy had said, you know, if if you know the Fallout series, you know that each Mm. vault typically you had either you were one in a million where you got a normal ish vault where it's just kind of like control vault. We don't really have, yeah, control vault or Mm -hmm. like you know something that's asked later in the series later on is like what was your experiment and she's like i don't she's know like what, what? You're talking about <laughs> every vault typically had had like some sort of a theme to it like in new vegas there's one where uh the whole vault was experimented by by radiation with plants and mm-hmm. when you get to this well i think it was like vault 88 or something um mm-hmm. I, I don't know i, I think mm-hmm. it, I know it was from new vegas but i used uh, to know these Jesus. Uh, you, know, you get in there and there's all these plant mutated plant people creatures and it you know you get into it's poison ivy on a bad day. Yeah, except feral. Yeah. 
And then yeah. you get like a vault Torfine. where everybody's been cloned to be the same guy. And they're Gary. The, clones. the clones can only say one word. Gary. <laughs> and take a guess, guess what, what his name is. Are. But, um, you know, and it was cool to see. I want them to focus more later on in the series about the different vaults, like experiment by going into, yeah. you know, they can have a little bit of fun. There's, uh, we don't know how many vaults in total, to my knowledge. There's 122. There's 122. You're okay. Welcome. So have some fun with the ones we don't know about They're They're still <laughs> like, hell, there's some vaults that we don't know anything about other than the fact that they were in like comic strips that were a thing that there were, were some done, that are like, mentioned that we don't know anything about yeah yeah like the guy with the puppets there's a vault where a guy was locked in a in a vault by with himself with a crate full of puppets so he you can crazy. imagine where that would go you know i want to see shit like that a reference to some dude staggering around in the wasteland with a hand puppet you know <laughs> have some fun with that but yeah i i just you you i could go on for a lot longer about this but for the sake of time, I'll just leave it at that. It, it did a very what was, good. Was it was it in Fallout Three? I think one of the f- more fun ones is uh, one was that they pumped a, a hallucinogenic drug through the air system, and everyone basically fucking went nuts and killed each yes. other. Yes. Uh, when you go in there, your game is not broken. I like your my screen went like green, then it went purple, and it's th- like fizzed out and it came back and i was like what the fuck i thought my game actually broke and i was like why is it glitching because if you know bethesda games especially fallout it's 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 part of the charm because it's not obnoxious but they are kind of glitchy games and they're kind of they lean into it which is kind of fun i thought my game was actually broken and i'm like oh no i'm tripping balls i'm actually tripping balls right now and i don't know what no, i'm you're looking like, at. yeah there and i'm seeing shit and i'm like i go to shoot it and it disappears and i'm like oh god i don't want to be in here anymore because the drug was starting to mess in my character's head, and I was like, I don't want to stay in here. This is not okay. <laughs> yeah, the two vaults that I would love to see something be worked with, and unfortunately, I don't remember their names or their numbers, but I know Tex would would love this one. Uh, it's the guy, it's the vault where they have one guy and 999 <laughs> women. <laughs> He's all... And then, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, see, one is, He's thinking uh, about it. It would <laughs> suck, though. That would kind of suck. It's uh, a... Certain things start syncing up. That's going to be hell on earth. I'm not. That sounds great in theory, but in, in reality, I'm not sure that works. That's all. Nine hundred and ninety nine so. women. I mean, yeah. and one guy. <laughs> Talk about my happy haunts. You know. I mean. <laughs> well, yeah. No, wait, till, wait, till, wait, till, wait till their menstrual cycles all sync up. That's, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's night. what I'm saying. When certain things sync <laughs> up, that for that week you don't want to be alive. That, that's going to be hell. And the, uh, but the problem is, then there is another vault where it's 999 guys and one woman, which sounds just as fucking horrifying. And it I'd would say because it'd be like it's you're spending time with like 532, and she's like, "Oh well, I bet you're thinking about 355 right now, aren't you, huh?" And then you just have to deal with that for the rest of the day. And that's wrong. Just I was stuff. thinking about 28, but you know what? <laughs> no, but they, that vault, and then the vault where it's um. It's I, I don't remember how many people are locked in it, but they're locked in there with a panther. It's oh, just, yeah, they're locked in there with a fucking Why? Pool. I don't know. Yeah. What was the thought okay. process? I mean, vault Tech has some fucking mystery. Yeah, like I said, look life. them up. They're all listed, and they had their experiment. Oh, one part of this so, show that I do say did do another vaults kind of experiment when they're having their little democracy vote. I was like, oh, yeah, that was in a vault. When you go in there, obviously everyone's gone because you're always like, oh, what happened to these people? You go in there and there's posters everywhere that says like vote for this person, vote for this person, for the overseer, vote for the overseer. And I'm like, okay, so there was a there was an election going on in here, but what happened? And I get all the way to the back end of the vault and I get into this room and the door locked behind me. And then I realized what happened. They would vote for somebody for overseer, and what it was was a fucking sacrifice. The walls drop down, and I'm in a chair by myself in the center, and these guns just tore me apart. I was like, oh, well. That's what happened to these people. So, Shit. who's more evil, Voltec or Umbrella from Resident Evil? Well, oh, Voltec, okay. Umbrella, Abstergo from fucking Portal. You want to go with? Um... They're all on par. <laughs> <Just saying>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, no, I'm sorry, Abstergo from Assassin's Creed. I mean, Aperture from Portal. My bad. They're all. Yeah, fucking the way terrible. I look at it is Voltec and Umbrella are literally the same. 
I mean, apart yeah, from the fact that like. they're kind of, yeah, they're bad. vault Tech didn't, you know, release, you know, like purposely infect humans and, you know, no, they turn, didn't turn Fido into, uh, you know, uh, they, they didn't do that, but they knew the problem. Remember, they, they, they were a... behind the whole nuclear thing, though, so similar yeah. but different kind of thing. They, there was a vault door that they let, it didn't seal all the way, and the radiation leaked in, and everybody in there turned, turned into ghouls. I'm like, they knew what the fuck they were doing. They purposely had some where the water chip and the stuff was supposed to break after 20 years, and then the backup wasn't supposed to work. And I mean, they, they, over, and they overstocked people. that one with guns, and they're like, well, they're going to kill each other, aren't they? Yeah. They screw with <laughs> their own people. I mean, look at Fallout 4. They won't even let their own vault tech representative in. That was kind of sad. That was I mean, sad. he lives. But still, <laughs> yeah, the guy trying to sell you a uh, sell you a place in the vault. You see him two hundred years later as a ghoul. I'm like, oh hey, awkward seeing you again. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> How'd that company severance package go? <laughs> I don't know, Jeremy. Do you have anything to add? If anything that Brady's already said about the comparisons to the game so far, as soon as I fucking mute myself because my headphones are dying um <laughs> not really like i said i tried to i'm trying to stay within the first uh four um four episodes but nothing from like the games but like i i agree with what he said this feels like you know fallout 5 or i'm like i believe that i i, I watched this and i'm like i could believe that this is a story quest like in its own that you could you know i could see a character going on so it didn't feel too crowded that you're like, oh, that's strictly that's this is three, this is Vegas, this is all you know. Um, but yeah, it there there are enough hints to it where you're like, oh, I get that. That's kind of like this because again, war never changes. There are things that will always still be the same. Speaking of which, it's like references. I'm gonna tell text why that reference is so fucking funny with the refrigerator. Yes, obviously it's a fucking Indiana Jones reference, but that gets funnier. No, no, no. Hear me out. It gets funnier because in Vegas, even though people think it's a waste, it's not a waste. There's a perk that you can take instead of taking two. You can take the second one, which is called Wild Wasteland. Now, like I said, they lean into the goofy shit. Wild Wasteland adds extra things to the game that you that won't be there if you play through it without it. One of the first ones you see is as soon as you leave the first town you leave going on your way down highway 91 or something on the side of the road there is a refrigerator and inside the refrigerator is a skeleton with a brown fedora hat on and i'm like you assholes <laughs> mother so I'm, it got even deeper when they when i see a young max so i'm like so much cross franchises into fallout this is what you're telling me well yeah because once you get into the strip the vegas strip there is a whole gang of like greasers as a uh as a faction, oh, so yeah, right. I mean, and like I said, there's an Elvis impersonator guy. He runs a, a faction called the Kings. I mean, there's Duh. that says it all. <laughs> he's he's one of the coolest fucking guys. I love his faction so much. He he does it. He wears it well. He says he's got the right accent. He's cool as shit. He's always yeah. And he's how you get the dog. He, he's how you get the dog in Vegas. So, what more could you ask for? Um, I will say one thing that this show did really well was. You know, one of the, I mean, like, like, you know, we don't really cover much of ghouls in the games. We just, they're there, you know, you like them, you don't, you, you know, some games even give you a companion that's a ghoul to help, you know, kind of diverse. Um, but one thing we never really get to, to learn too much about, whether it's through the ghouls, through dialogue, through, you know, reading um, computers, is the whole process of how one becomes a ghoul. What happens, you know, how, what's the difference between a feral and a non-feral? What's the, you know, do you, is there like, you know, some random lottery you have to win in order to survive through the nuclear radiation and become oh, don't, a ghoul? Don't, don't start talking about winning the lottery. I'm having Vegas flashbacks again. <laughs> um, you know, he knows what I'm talking about. But it's like, you never ah. really do hear throughout the games where it's like, oh, you know, well, oh, those are ferals, and if you hear a ghoul talk about a feral ghoul, they don't say, oh, that's going to be me one day, or you know, they're just like, uh, some of us got lucky, is one one of the games, I, I think uh, the, Tex, I feel like you would love this guy. Uh, in Fallout 4, there's a ghoul by the name of Hancock, who takes, he wears 
a red Confederate uniform. He wears, he has the tricorn hat because he just walked into a museum, <clears> found <throat> that, put it on, and was like, yeah, I'm John Hancock now. So it's like, uh, yeah. there you go. and he talks about it. He goes, you know, and they don't really talk about, you know, there's certain things that you have to do to stay a sentient ghoul. And we only see one sentient ghoul in this entire, well, we see two, but one never talks. He's just in the background. And the other ones that we do see, which I really like to see that process, it was actually cool. They ended up using the sound effects from the game, too. Mm-hmm. But, like, the ghoul in the suit that's sitting there talking, and he's like, you know, you remember the taste of food, stuff like that. And he would just be talking, and he all of a sudden, you know, like, I don't know where, just quickly whips around and growls at her and goes back to himself. Like, he, it, it's kind of like, so that's how that works. That's what that's like. Do you just wake, I, I, you know, and it's not something you really sit there and think about a lot. Like, not a lot of people would go, you know, I really wonder how this works. But they, they focused heavily on that where it's like you know you get that one ghoul in the super duper mart in the fourth episode where martha yeah she just keeps repeating this name over and over and i will why'd you say that name it it didn't help that (laughs) i I couldn't help it (laughs) it didn't help that i was it was like three or four o'clock in the morning by the time i got to episode four but i was like why is it keep saying is that like its daughter's name is it what what's going on and she just keeps saying, uh, 2 a.m. You know, Brady was it, going feral. Why do you keep saying that term? <laughs> Stop it. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's not like Henry Cavill or Affleck are doing anything right now. So, you know, put him in Fallout. Who gives you shit? Might as well. That'd be kind of funny. The, give the, uh, night, the Nightmare <clears throat> Batman. Yeah, I was going to say, where'd he go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, Nightmare yeah. Batman, yeah. Batman would be, he's, pre- he's, I mean, he's already got the camo gear and the, you know, mm-hmm. the. Joker card duct tape to his AK. Let's do this thing, you know. Yeah. So why not? How the hell did you get that armor? <laughs> mods, <laughs> right? But, yeah, uh, Fallout with mods is so much fun. Uh, but yeah, right. it was just it was cool to for them to come for, to delve into this minor like I wouldn't even call it like a side story, but just like a side, just like a topic that isn't really discussed. It's so I was I was really pleased to see how they incorporated that. Give you this this mysterious. Um, stranger drug that oh. causes, you know, mysterious stranger. That, right, did we on, get I'm a gonna... reference to the mysterious stranger at all? That no, would have been a good one. I because the way you'd have to, oh, I don't know. Like if some guy just randomly comes around the corner, this Dick Tracy looking dude comes around the corner and just shoot somebody for him. That kind of would have had to have been how you do it. But <laughs> thanks, I don't know. stranger. You're welcome. <laughs> just do the little, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's the part that gets me. Like, I'm always questioning now. Did like, was Vault Boy designed to be him, or after him? Like, does that? I swear or that they just... base it off of someone. But then I'm like, I'm not mad that he's the inspiration because if you looked at his cowboy outfit, I already noticed. I'm like, oh, he's wearing blue and yellow. I'm like, oh, he's gonna be it. I've got a piece of trivia about that. We're not going to do any trivia at the end of this episode because I want to save it all until we've actually broke down a late episode. But there was there's something that one of the producers said about about the about the the character of the thumbs up kid that, that yeah. there's a bit de- there's a bit deeper meaning that gets explored at some point. There's okay. there's going to be more to him than just him being a logo. So that's why I've heard anyway. That's that's yeah. fair. Uh, that's I mean that I like that that they even incorporated. So now it's like, well, who did the thumbs up first? Was it him? Was it Vault Boy? I don't know. <laughs> like I love that I think they did that really that explanation at the beginning of the series, like first episode, when they dropped the bomb to say or per se, and uh, you know it's like my the thumb or your thumb. thumb, and I was like, <laughs> I well I hate I looked down at my phone and I was looking at something. Um, and she goes, is it my thumb or your thumb? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I look up, shit. rewound it, yeah. and I'm just like, that flash while he's inside getting cake. And I'm just like, God, yeah. oh, shit. And then I, I, I never thought in my wildest dream, and the whole time, this sweetheart is just sitting there shaking with her thumb up like, well, what, what, what do I do now? trying to, I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Well, but I well, never thought that. The- it had a very... Last of Us feel to it. I'm like, oh, she's gonna die, isn't she? Like right. the first three well, seconds, like, oh, he has a cute little daughter. I'm like, she's gonna fucking die, isn't she? Well, I know my mom. Well, we don't know that yet. And the first <laughs> thing she said was, "I'm hoping my mom, where my mom goes, is is what about the horse? I'm like, what, what do you mean, what about the horse? The horse <laughs> no, is dead. Oh, <laughs> Sorry the horse about of the apocalypse. The first no, I had. There, but 
But no, that I never the first thought, thought I had in that scene, scene of him riding that horse and just all like one, two, three, four bomb. Like I didn't. I thought it was one big bomb, and I didn't realize that they dropped. They were no, they dropped almost, multiples. It they were really... detonating like in the in the middle of the city or whatever. But it God, happened really that, fast. Yeah, that that was just like a real small like bringing it up kind of a thing that I really thought was cool. We've but... only seen it in fallout four. We've never actually seen the bombs dropping except for now. And then the beginning of fallout four. So I'm like, that never ceases to just be like, you know, that look, if wish we had that shot of that look on Walton Goggins faces when he's looking at it, like happen. I'm like, yeah, that's the face you should have right now. Like, Oh shit. Yeah, in it's, fallout it's four, you don't get much time. You see, no, the even then fog, you don't like, Oh shit. <laughs> But like, like you see it, you see it detonate off in the distance, and then you're being lowered into your vault, and the the shockwave goes like right over your head. It just misses you. I'm like, right, that's that's it. And they did, and the amount of detail that they put into that, just like like I watch when I watched it the second time, because I love to watch the small things that are focused on, and it was like you could see as the I I unfortunately I don't know what that's called when that cloud when when you get that first burst uh, shockwave shockwave. The, yeah, because it's a flash, like a, and then you I see the, like a and then you hear it. Term for it. Um, yeah, but like that alone, they say that part typically kills everything in its path. So I don't know if maybe they were just at that distance where it just did enough to like break the glass. They were safe, but like if you look so well detailed as the buildings are getting hit by that, you can see the glass breaking, like shining off the off the sun, shit like that. Where I'm just like, hot damn! Like they really a lot yeah it got hot that's the thing is it is a shock wave and then everything gets burned in its path i'm like that's probably the best time if well, you're that, gonna die that slow, right there that slow motion where he's like oh no baby that's just smoke there's a fire and i'm sitting here i'm like that's a big ass fucking fire it's taking up half <laughs> he said it's fire i'm like yeah atomic fire and i ship with the glasses on like it was fucking csi like yeah. what I, I just kind of looked at that part and I was like, "You sing it's a fire, but it's taking up probably twenty square blocks of exactly. downtown LA. Like of downtown that's LA, not, yeah. that's not a fire. That's that's a severe occurrence, whatever it may be. And then yeah. it's like even he realizes how wrong he was. It's like as he's sitting there watching it, and then you see the mushroom cloud start to slowly develop out of it. Oh, like, that was oh, cool. That shit, glow. And I, lo- <laughs> I love that even he was even told like, "Hey, it's like when I was in the Marines, we were even told like." Don't even try to run. And I'm like, yeah, but run. his first instinct is grab his daughter and get out. I'm like, right. Oh, well, so. it was like, if it's bigger than your thumb, well, what do you do then? Don't even bother. Don't, don't but bother. like, just enjoy the view. <laughs> just yeah. that glow as it, he's like, oh, it's just a fire. And like, I'm looking right at it now. Like, you know, you've got it on screen. Mm. Uh, oh, I'm looking at my TV following this and you had it on screen. But right. like, just all those certain buildings right down there, just the way, like, you, they just come down like a, tower of dominoes like it's just and that so well you can do because that's how that works that's how that happens that first shock wave is just enough that you think oh you know oh shit there's your warning no most things don't survive that shock wave you were just up you know and all that just you were lucky it's and the initial yeah mm-hmm. and uh that just that that whole that whole portion there was so well done and so well made that you don't get to really experience that kind of thing in fallout you know it's typically it's oh you learn about it after the fact or in fallout 4 you experience it as you're going down into the vault you don't get to see much uh fun thing i Mm -hmm. i figured out playing fallout 4 is if you're just dicking around and you don't go to where you're supposed to go they drop the bomb while you're wandering around and you actually get to it's just you die and it's like Hmm. what the fuck you doing go to the vault what what, we didn't expect you to do this but you clearly don't know you're playing who you're playing with here at this point but game this is (laughs) what do you think this is so that i mean that was cool as shit just the way they did that intro so well just so well done like it does give the depth of how that shit went down (laughs) Mm-hmm. What, what about what about the Easter eggs? I, I caught a few as I was watching these, but oh boy. I know there had to be a plethora of Easter eggs. You're going to need another this. episode. You're going to need a bigger <laughs> episode. <laughs> yeah. well, let's, You're gonna let's, need... let, let's talk about the first four episodes. I mean, what, what are some of the ones that jumped out to you, Jeremy? Some of the, some of the Easter eggs that only the gamers are probably really going to catch. 
Uh, like I said, maybe not an Easter egg, but like I said, when Lucy's like banging on the window trying to get to her dad and she can't, I'm like, that's definitely Fallout 3 when your dad, uh, spoiler, he dies um, right in front of you and you can't do anything about it. What? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You're on four. Like, how, how do you not know this? Um, uh, hell. I, like I said, I guess his clothes, right? He had the yellow and blue already for the um, the vault colors. Uh, let's see what else. The fucking junk jet. Okay. L- okay, we need to talk about that for a fucking second. <laughs> when I saw a man die because a baby doll leg went into his fucking chest... <laughs> I had to pause because first of all, A, I was laughing so fucking hard because I knew what that was. And B, I had to then explain it to Rachel because I'm like, let me explain to you why that's so fucking funny. That's a junk jet. Now you have in your inventory, you have, you know, apparel, you have guns, you have uh aid, so you have like you know, med stuff, food, uh, ammo, and then you'll have like miscellaneous and like quest items, then you'll have junk. So junk you can sell, obviously, for caps. You can get money out of it, and obviously there are some things that are more um, more profitable. Some things just could literally be junk. So you can leave it, or, again, this is where the goofy shit, the fallout, and the dark humor comes in. You can make a gun called the junk jet, which we saw for a split second, and we saw it in the, in the lady's shop. You ever just wanted to launch a teddy bear at someone's face and kill them with it? There you go. You can do that. That's what that gun is, and it's the dumbest thing, but it's so funny. Um, there's plenty of uh, I think there's a couple Nuka Cola things. There's a Sunset Sarsaparilla, like we said. Uh, there's one that's still sticking out in my head because I caught it, but it's in the last half. But there was a magazine that he was reading, uh, a Tesla magazine, which is a thing in the game. Uh, every time you read a magazine, certain magazines give you certain perks. So, like, if, if you find like the gun nut, or not the perk, sorry. There's a guns and ammo magazine that will give you like a perk in guns. There's a Tesla, which gives you a science perk. There's tumblers today, which gives you lock picking, you know, uh, they mentioned, wait, no, they mentioned Gronyak the barbarian on the TV show, which yeah, that's a, that's a character slash uh, comic book series that exists in this world. Um, what else was there? Obviously there was just the music. I mean, obviously the music in this game or sorry, in this, yeah, in the game and in the show. You gave me like three or four rounds of Johnny Cash, and I'm like, stop. I'm already <laughs> invested. I, oh my God. Uh, I don't really say the guns count because I'm just like, oh, I know what that gun is. I know what that gun is. That's that gun from this, you know. I, I know all those. Um, uh, I still, and I still think his line, that line was written by somebody who's a fan of the games, the one I have down here, you will get sidetracked by bullshit every time. <laughs> I'm like, what fitting, what better fitting way to describe this game than that? Um, I was a little t- bummed if we're, I mean, looking at references and everything that they, I wish they would have gone as far as to get some original characters to just, or actors, I guess you could say, not characters, mm. but just reprise their role or something like that. Like the guy with the water chip. Are we making a reference to Fallout, to the early Fallout, one. or Fallout was one. that particular person someone we're supposed to know? Like, oh, by the way, that's the voice of Preston Garvey. Well, I like stuff like that. I thought it was maybe three dog. We didn't have the right voice, so no. Um, plus, I think he's a much older. I don't know how old that guy is at this point. Oh uh, wait, uh, um, that was twenty seventy seven. I would have guessed he's maybe in his like thirties. He's not too old. Okay. Maybe, maybe in a series, um, but... but just stuff like that, where like you know, if the Mister Handy, I call it a Codsworth because or, I, I don't we know if love, they're all Cod- we all Codsworth, love Codsworth. But oh um, yeah, he was in one of the episodes, wasn't he? Wasn't that the actual voice actor talking to Walton Goggins? No, that's not him. The guy who that guy is actually quite old. Not quite old. I'd say he's in his fifties or sixties. He's all actually the voice of. Uh, Mercer Frey in Fall or in Skyrim, and also the voice of Nick Valentine in Fallout Four. So Codsworth well, is the same voice. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, Codsworth is the same voice as uh, Nick Valentine or voice actor. So having him in there would have been really cool, or something like that. Or you um, know, freaking Ron Perlman. Oh God, the ultimate uh, Easter egg that we reference that we need. 
even if he's just in the background or some fucking bartender in a in a rundown bar. But I mean, I mean, the ultimate we we got the ultimate reference that we needed, which was finally hearing them say "War never changes." Oh yeah, which you know it, it was good to hear that. I I heard that and I'm like, yes. I didn't like well, that the first time we hear it was from uh, his wife. I don't know why. I felt like it could have just it should have been delivered by somebody different. I maybe hold it off it, for the maybe hold it off for when uh, you know he says it himself. But apart from that, I thought that was the I there there's like I told Frank there there needs to be a whole episode dedicated to the Easter eggs. Um, I, there is a video what? online right now that is about an hour and twenty minutes of. There's about twenty them. of them online. New rock stars. Got oh them yeah, them. yeah. That's yeah. who I was actually. Yeah, that's the, uh, I, was talking about. Uh, I was wondering if maybe we'd see, unless I didn't see it, uh, if there was a glimpse of Vault Thirteen, uh, because Vault Thirteen is the uh, the vault from the very first game. It's the original one that you start out, which is also in Southern California. So I was wondering if maybe somewhere we might have seen it, but. Uh, if it was there, I didn't see it, and if it's not there, I'm not mad. But it's kind of like that would have been kind of funny to see that, or if she, uh, shit, it's back there in in the bedroom. Uh, if she found the lucky third or the uh, the thirteen uh, canteen, you know, yeah, your, your trusty vault thirteen canteen, which is hard to say a couple times fast. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, yeah, like I say, I mean, there, there's just so much to pick apart. And oh, we saw the, the we saw the ranger armor. In fact, yeah. let me stand up right now. I don't think if that was, uh, I don't even know if that was in the first four episodes. I think it, I don't think it was. I don't think um, it was, but I'm just telling you right now, I've got it right here. Your armor. <laughs> but uh, the thing, I, I'd say most oh. of the show is just nothing but like little Easter eggs, you know, of like, oh, there's, you know, merchandise from the from that universe or um, just name dropping certain products, uh, probably, you know, and then getting into like where you, like the thing talking about, which, you know, it's not jumping too much into the fourth or the, the last few episodes, but not name dropping someone, but just putting something as simple as what company they reference or what company they're in charge of. Oh, we'll talk about that in the, leg in the second yeah. half. I'll just tell you that's what. enough to where, like, I didn't pick up on it because, like I said, I didn't touch that game as much. But, you know, when Jeremy's like, did you not realize who that was? And I'm like, Walt Disney? <laughs> like, the dude looked yeah. like fucking young Walt Disney. But that type of and stuff he does. is where eagle-eyed viewers are going to go. Because if you're not really just sitting there looking at the screen, you're too busy paying attention to the guy. You're just going to, you know, you're just seeing some pompous prick in a suit. If you happen to look at his name or at his company tag, yeah, you will be like, oh, shit, that's so and so that coupled with the final shot that we saw of the last episode you're like oh this is good this is about to go off exactly so stuff like that is what really makes but that's know, a like, story for a different Kent day said, there's moments where they'll you're focus welcome. on something a little too long and you're like okay now we know what that is we know why she's looking at it at, you know there's a big portrait or a big uh, billboard of vault boy Okay, that's cool. We know who that is. We know where where what, what's focusing on. I'm pretty sure one of those billboards was one of the sign or the loading screens for uh, um, the the mobile game that you you had uh, mentioned a little bit ago. Oh, uh, there, yeah, yeah. And then just stuff like, see, God, that looks like Fallout Four. I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you don't get to see much of Hollywood. I also or anything, I so. I want. Please market that pack. I want her backpack. That is so goddamn it's a cool. Thing. <laughs> I, I thought like if, they, if like you're dumb if you don't market that because I want one of those bags. They did, but they already screwed it up. Well, I was like, as soon as they announced it, three seconds later, it sold out. So like, I didn't really know what I was gonna do. But well, they pulled a seventy six on that where everybody got the product and it's not it's not what they talk. Ah. It's not what they said. The guy at GameStop the was damn Vault Tech fucking representatives. <laughs> Yeah, the guy at GameStop was explaining that to me. He goes, yeah, everybody wanted it. They got it. And it, it was called, it was made by, in his words, vegan product. So it's plastic. Oh, that's right. They did. They f That's right. So they did they that with was... this too. So he was like, it's not you even You could have just made it canvas. I mean, how is that not? I don't know. It's expensive. Whatever. But yeah, that's, I, like, <laughs> no shit. you know. 
I, I'm sure there's still references that Jeremy's missed, but it's like, oh yeah, I didn't catch everything. I'm, I'm sure fourth play through or watch through. Here we go. You know, it's like <laughs> let's pick a different faction. These, let's go this way. Yeah, that's the best thing about these types of shows is no matter how many times you watch it, just like the video games. And I've talked about this a thousand times. Like I've played Skyrim so many times to the point where uh, we better be getting a fucking Elder Scrolls series, but. Um, I have played that game so many times and still to this day, little things happen that I'm like, wait, you can do that. Or I didn't know that. Well, that people were still finding stuff like 10 years later. Exactly. Game that no and one ever found. I'm like, when right. That game that is massive. With your show, when you've done that with your games or your shows, that's where you can tell this was made by a true fan. This it, it's kind of like the five nights at Freddy's problem in oh, it, it, with yeah. connecting with Tex and what he says. If you are a fan, you know what you're going into you are going to have an absolute fucking blast. If you are going into this kind of like, eh, it looks cool. Sure, let's see what's going on. You're going to be like, eh, it was an okay show. And, you know, it was good. It had everything I liked, just like what when I, I have all my coworkers have watched it. And I mean, most of my coworkers are in their late 60s. Um, and, you know, one of them come up to me and it was like, she started asking questions. She's like, what's this? And then I stop and I'm like, I should probably be getting back to, you know, helping a doctor in a room, but I'm too busy explaining to her yeah, just... 20 minutes of in depth of what the fuck a death claw looks like just because she asked why, <laughs> what, what the skull was or what the, why it's, it's like with Rachel, she hasn't played the games and I'm like, and she probably has to listen to me. Never shut up about fallout because I do love it. And I'm like, I can sit here and explain this all to you. And I'm, I'm glad. I think I, I gave her a gift of some money and, uh, to, to buy the games, I think she bought three and four. Came with all the DLCs, and I was gonna say I recommend playing getting Vegas as well, just to experience it. And then, yeah, if it does get people into the game, I mean that's awesome. I think the number, I mean, someone did the numbers on Steam, and like the the game skyrocketed over the weekend when this came mm-hmm. out. So if it does nothing else, you'll get back into Fallout. I mean, it's I mean, why not? It's still fun. You can do something completely different every time. Like you can be Monty Python. You'd be like, and now for something completely different. And you go this yeah. way. You know what I mean? I'm so going to kill every the... person I see. <laughs> Tex, I'll, I'll make a psychopath playthrough and I'll fucking, I'll kill everybody in Vegas and I'll try my best to do it again. <laughs> I'm telling you. it. I only got lucky because I was killing a certain faction and then when I got to the Vegas trip, one of their representatives came up to me and said, hey, we're willing to just wipe the slate clean if you just come and talk to us. And I'm like, I feel like okay. there's a trap somewhere in here. Yeah, well, it was the lead. If I'm you're just gonna go over their heads, but it was the Legion, and I was like, wait, 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 wait. So you want me to assassinate the president of the NCR? Hold on, that's the two biggest factions. I can get him, and then they almost made this reference in the game. I will say when Lucy says like, "Oh, I was thinking about putting a grenade in the head and just killing all of you," I'm like. Ah. There's that perk where you we use your sneak to go up behind somebody. It's a classic move. Mm. You sneak a grenade into their inventory, you back up, and you just watch the fireworks. Watch the so watch funny. the fireworks happen. So fucking funny. I yeah. was like, ah, oh, there's that reference. Um, that's what I did. To, that's what I did to uh, Caesar. After I did that mission, I'm like, cool. The two biggest factions are now dealt with. And you I, know, hey, I cured his cancer. I cured his brain cancer by blowing his fucking ass up. Yeah, I mean, that's You're true. <laughs> Me, You're that's welcome. one. That it was mercy. It, was, it wasn't murder. It was mercy. It was, I know. <laughs> there it was, was a mercy one killer. major thing that, that, you know, you had brought it up with uh, the wild wasteland that the, I consider this to be its own Easter egg in itself is the weird ass shit that just randomly happens. You know, your perk is. Yeah. 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 You're, you know, for example, you're just trying you're trying out your new power armor. Shit's getting real cool. All of a sudden, people are being attacked. So you, you run in there and be like, hey, stop it. You break it up. Dude, what the fuck? He was fucking my chickens. Uh, <laughs> that guy's gone. The you snake oil New salesman Vegas? was the funniest thing. I play love New that guy. Vegas, that's fine. But when you have yeah. a group of old ladies coming at you with rolling pins with rolling as their pins. own fucking faction, yeah, you're going to be like, what the fuck is this? Like that's the point is just the the wasteland is a very weird and interesting place and just eat, whether it's you come across a dude fucking a chicken or a bunch of old ladies with with fucking rolling pins or just or you happen to come across uh, the Pikmin gallery 
the Pikmin gallery, which actually I just did in Fallout. Uh, Texel, like it, that, you fall into a place where this guy, this serial killer, uh, what did he do? He painted, he made all these paintings, but he painted it with like all the victims, like blood and shit. And I go in there, and I'm like, this he is makes, por- he makes a uh, sculpture out of body parts. And he's, yeah, we're, yeah, it was um, fucked up. Hang on. I didn't want to be in that room. Is that it? Is that, uh, is that an Easter egg for the Canadian serial killer Robert Pickton? Oh I shit! Think, I think it he was be. named after. I think he was named after something. That would have been might have been what it was. Because there was a, he was. I think. I think. Or I think Robert Pickton was a pig farmer, or something like mm. in real life. That sounds very familiar for some reason. And I'm. I'm not, I don't know fuck all about these games. So. Well, yeah, but there, there's I other just, references to that. I'm yeah. a big true crime guy. And I, I heard Pickton. I'm like, wait a minute, I know that. Mm-hmm. I don't know where that came from. I realized yeah. that someone did mention that the, the way this game works, it's like obviously the phys- the the physics and the way the radiation works, they're like, yeah, it's not based off of like what really happens to you. It's supposed to be. That's why I was like, uh, why does everything look like it's from the 1950s? I'm like, I didn't notice the they, point. Have, they have this stuff called Radaway, which is basically just a cure for radiation. Sickness. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like, nice to have in the real world. <laughs> it's like, it's all based off of like pulp comics from the 50s and like what people thought this stuff was going to be like in the 50s, mm-hmm. how it's going to be in the future. They're like, that's what the physics of how this world works. And I'm like, that's very clever because remember, and Tex will know this, you know why there's ghouls. What was the reason for the zombies in Night of the Living Dead, the original movie? Um, asteroid. Is it radiation? Uh, space. Radiation. radiation, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's where you get your ghouls from. Yeah. Like, see, there's ties to it's 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 there, trust me. Like yeah, and and that's in that time. That's in the what late sixties, where that's still kind of a big deal, like going to space. And now we've got the sixty. Let's see, Not Living Dead was sixty eight. Sixty eight, right? Yeah, I think it was sixty eight. Yeah, yeah. So like that's yeah. where that's based off of. That's you know there yeah. there are so many deep references in this series that come from other venues of pulp fic, uh, pulp fiction. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. like iguana uh, on a pulp stick. culture. <laughs> Yeah, you want some squirrel bits or iguanas? I ain't seeing no fucking eating. iguanas. Where's these iguanas coming from? Hey, we well, didn't see a we didn't see a red scorpion, and we're going to Vegas. So, oh my god, we might see a cazador. Fuck it. You, I'm done. You think that shit's? Been, I've seen one of those in real life. Like, they weren't three feet wide. I saw the actual. Ca- it was about this big, but it's a horrifying bug. It's like a murder hornet or some shit. It's about that big. They look about the same. It was dragging a dead carcass of a spider about equal size across the uh, dirt. And I was like, now see, I've played the game where they're about, t- you know, five feet wide. Yep, That's horrifying. Ohio now. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was out, I was out in New Mexico. I was like, this, this tracks, this is where this would be at. So. Well, we're going to go ahead and start to wrap it up here again. I'm going to save the, uh, the trivia for tomorrow night after we've broke down all eight episodes and I won't be spoiling anything for any of you who haven't watched all eight episodes yet. And yeah. we'll be able to talk a little more freely about some of the cool trivia. I've got a couple already, but I'll take up a few more for tomorrow night. Let me get your guys' final thoughts on episodes one through four of Fallout on Amazon Prime. I'll go to you first, Tex. Uh, first four episodes, what did you think of them so far? Uh, Yeah, first four. The first episode was kind of definitely a clunker but kind of hard to get through because the, they just throw so much plot at you and like from the very beginning they just hit you with it and you know here here's all this here's three different stories that uh, at some point or another will come together but figure all this out once you know once you get past that it gets a little better um i i will say as the episodes go the the quality tends to be better than the previous so i do like that um I still say they they went a little too heavy on the member berries and hardcore for the fans, and I think that's going to hurt them long run with a more casual, wide audience. Because, like Gamer had said, his coworker had to have a twenty minute conversation to explain one thing. You know, like there's this is one of those kind of shows. So it's this show has a lot in common with late series Walking Dead seasons. Mm. I, I'm I'm noticing that already. Like. They're throwing a lot out there, and you just kind of got to go with it. It's it's not bad. It's what it's something that I would recommend somebody watch if they haven't seen. But maybe do a lot of homework before you like. If you just want to watch a show, this is a, this is a fine watch. But if you want to fully enjoy 
go do some homework. So, but you know, one of those guys. I'll go to you next, uh, Brady. Give me your final thoughts on episode one through four of Fallout. Well, uh, to the, unfortunately, to counter what Tex said, it, it screamed everything a Fallout fan would love for this show. <laughs> uh, there you go. I do agree with him 100% on that fact that, you know, you you shouldn't really have to do a crap ton of homework just to watch a show. But you you should be able to just go into this. And I, I do feel like that maybe he's right. They No, there's no maybe. He is right. They did hit hit major nostalgia points for those who know what they're going into. But you should be able to do it to where if you have to do like a real just random snippets throughout the show where somebody has to kind of explain, okay, you know, the brotherhood of steel formed started this time, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> go through that. Just, oh, I can do that if you want. And I got you <laughs> like a loading screen, but no, yeah. like I, I think that so far just four episodes in, they did a kick-ass job explaining to you, what, what are, where are we going with this? What is going on? And really just definitely giving you a halfway point to, to Lucy really opening up and realizing, okay, this isn't the vault anymore. These, this is, there are no rules. All my rules are out the window. So I, I think they did a fantastic job and just, they, they hit hard with the gore. They hit hard with the random stupid shit that you don't know when to expect. And it's just, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, so Definitely, definitely looking forward for a second season. Uh, Jay, what do you think? Your your final thoughts on episodes one through four? <clears throat> um, I'll try not to, you know, because um, to reiterate too much of what I said, but I I agree. It's a good, it's a good character arc. If you I mean if you kind of just pay attention to you know your main character of Lucy, she has the, you know, uh, night nativity of being in the vault and being literally sheltered from this world so and you know she it's it's i feel like she's like yeah she knows how to fight she knows how to shoot a gun and like you are that character i'm like you've played a video game before you play this you're like i know how to kind of fight i know how to shoot a gun i could get into this and when then when you get there and you realize what kind of world you're in you're like oh okay i do have to get my hands dirty and she she definitely got that she kind of got to after getting out of the super duper mart kind of like yeah okay well talking isn't really doing it anymore so the guns it is so golden rule motherfucker yeah and just golden rule motherfucker drops the drugs at the ghoul's uh, face and just leaves them there I'm like yeah she kind of did do the batman she's like i'm not gonna save you or i'm not gonna kill you but i'm not gonna try and save you so if you figure it out dude um which was fair uh yeah it had a lot of cool setup a lot of you know there's a lot of easter eggs uh it did just kind of, and even with her being in a control vault, it still gave you right from the get go, the impression of like, you're still not safe. You could have a bunch of dickhead raiders come into your neighboring vault, kill them, pretend to be your neighbors, and then come in and try and kill you all. I'm like that tracks that tracks for this world. That's, that's this brutal world that you're living in that it doesn't really matter because something, something could still happen to you. Um, and in a world like this, yeah, a lot of wild things will happen to you. So, uh, and I, I think it ca- just even in this first bit and in this first season, um, I think we kind of got that experience. And, and like, and I will say, yeah, it's it does suck because we're not doing like Marvel levels of homework. I don't think, thankfully, but if it at least kind of get like Brady said, if it kind of gets, you know, you got new fans now or people that are like they want to know more, you get curious about it or like. <laughs> you might go check out the game now. You're like, Oh, well, what's this about? Or how does this, you know, tie into it? Um, it, it gets uh, old fans back into it and everyone's talking about it right now. And I'm like, that's a good thing. That's a big, a big franchise that a lot of people are very passionate about. So if that's what did it for it, I mean, the same happened with last of us, you know, and I think even, uh, um, I keep forgetting his damn, uh, Nolan. Uh, he even said like the last of us was like, this is how I got this done because of that success. And I'm like, well, the success partly comes from you have the right people in the chairs. Like I said, you have the the person who made the games. You have people that are fans of the games. And like we said, I can't praise Ella uh, Purnell enough that she was like, I want to know more about this. And I want to, you know, you got her into it playing the game. Um, 
and she, you know, it's like this is literally the she understood the assignment, and I think she nailed it. So, uh, yeah, again, watch the show. I mean, it's a fun watch, and whether you've it's more fun, I guess, if you if you played the games because you'll catch more. But if you haven't, and I would recommend it, go either watch someone play the game. I mean, there's plenty of playthroughs, especially now. There's a lot of people doing it right now. Uh, or play the game for yourself. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth it. This is a wild, it's a wild wasteland. I'm going to keep saying it. And trust me, it's a wacky fucking world to, be, to experience. Yeah, you know, I, not being very in tune with the games like at all. I, I still found it pretty engrossing. I'm not going to put it up there with Last of Us. I think Last of Us is still kind of another level. But I still I do still think this is actually a very fun watch. Um, a bit different, a bit more comedic. I mean, Last of Us had the odd joke here and there to kind of like lighten the tension before more. Oh, it has happened. a lot of dark humor, yeah. Yeah, but Fallout, I mean, like the whole herd just like carrying a guy's head around and it's all this all the funny shit that Walton Goggins mm-hmm. says. I mean, he's he's... I compare it a little bit to Freddy Krueger. Yes, he can absolutely kill everybody in the room without thinking twice about it or even really trying that hard on many occasions. But but he'll also say something witty and funny while he's doing it, which is always really fun to see a killer have fun play with his food, so to speak. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it's a great introduction for me who's not very in tune with the game stuff, like like Jeremy and, and Brady are. It's, uh, I, I can just kind of watch this and not feel like I'm missing too much of anything. I didn't have to catch the Easter eggs to enjoy some of the stuff that I saw. I didn't have to that, know it have an end to catch the visuals. I actually think this is one of my favorite shots in the first episode, oh, actually. Which iconic. It's like when the awesome. vault door opens and it's just like the light of the outside that they have probably, did, none of them have ever seen before. I, that was a very interesting shot. And yeah. then how it's like when she's out there, how the light kind of like dims down and you see her and then like the world just kind of appears in front of her very slowly through the light, which I thought was a very interesting shot. Uh, the cinematography yeah. I thought was pretty good. I mean, like again, you're, you're talking about a desert wasteland essentially of nuclear fallout. So you mm-hmm. can't look great, but the, the, the way it was shot was pretty good. Uh, acting was very good. Actually. I, I can't really knock any of the actors in this. I, I I'm not, Overly fond of, like of Maximus, like uh, like Brady said, but I he, his character has more room for growth. I'm just gonna look at there because there was plenty of growth for him over the course of this of this first eight episodes. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what comes next after this. I mean, I I found myself after watching the last episode, kind of just like I really just want to see more. I don't I don't want to have to wait. We we've set this world up as now all this craziness. She's found her dad and blah blah blah, but. I, I, I left I left this wanting to see more, ready to see more. Again, I don't quite put it up there with Last of Us. I think Last of Us was way better, but well, it was yeah. still pretty. It was still pretty damn good, considering that I have no real knowledge of the world itself. But like, I mean, if you just made this on its own without having been based in a video game, I think it probably would still have roughly the same reception. I mm. I, I feel like it probably would. I'm not 100 percent sure. I can't say that for a fact, but I feel like it would. But uh, you guys can go watch this. All eight episodes are available on Amazon now. Uh, go check it out. We'll be here tomorrow breaking down uh, the final four episodes and then going over some of the trivia from it all. Uh, thanks to all my great co-hosts for coming out. To the Shapes of Lone Star State, my man Tex. Where can the folks at home find you, my friend? Uh, here tomorrow night. Um, I did read yesterday that my favorite film of the year so far, Late Night with the Devil, is coming to streaming on Shutter and I believe AMC Plus. I think is I think is the two services that's getting it this Friday. So even if you just want to do like a thirty day free trial to Shutter just to see this film, I can't implore you to go do that enough because this film is incredible. I hope we review it here. I adored this movie. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it again. But uh, go make sure you check that out on Friday because it'll be. Uh, It'll be out then. So. And to the ghost host, my man Brady, working the folks at home behind you, Mike. What do you got going on, on your channel right now? Well, uh, things have uh, changed quite a lot on my channel. Uh, I ended up kind of retiring the Brooding Gamer channel. Uh, it, things kind of just hit a roadblock. And uh, unfortunately, you know, Jurassic Park isn't exactly as an ongoing thing unless something's currently happening you don't really you're it not really I've been, uh, I've been seeing a lot of stuff I, yeah, don't, I don't know how true it is but i've been seeing a lot of stuff yeah it hits its thing for a short time and then you you go into a, a major quiet period and i had a side channel for a long time of of disney stuff and 
decided, you know, I'm going to really get into it, actually put effort into it, you know, do some real work on it, see how it goes. And it's taking off a lot quicker than I thought it would. It's almost, it's, uh, it's almost hit 800 subscribers. So you can find me on my, you know, the channel name called your ghost host where I cover. And of course I'm trying to get, um, Jeremy and Rachel involved in that as well. Uh, so have my, All you gotta do is tell me I'm, I'm there. Oh yeah. Two of my 299 happy or 999 happy haunts, um, where, you know, we, we cover, I'm covering Disney games, films, uh, series, just, just anything I really can. So it's not necessarily haunted mansion related, but there's a lot of haunted mansion stuff in there. So, uh, that's where you can find me on uh, your ghost host channel. And my hetero life mate, Jeremy, where can the folks go find you, my friend? Um, well, usually Tuesday, but uh, things didn't work out that way. So I'm here today. That's why I say, you know, Tuesday and Thursday, but it could be any day. Who knows? Uh, you know, same vault time, same vault channel. <laughs> I, I was sitting on that one for a minute. I like that. <laughs> yeah, we got we gotta, <laughs> we got it. We got to keep the, you know, the, the, the corporate crap going. The I got to put the. Um, they live levels of fucking, you know, consumerism out there. And, uh, with your biggest company in the U S and this, uh, alternate timeline of history. Yeah. That's, that's who it's going to be. Uh, yeah, honest. And I, I kind of agree with gamer. It's like the thing right now, like I said, I, I look right over here and on the sidebar, someone's playing fallout three for the first time live. That's, that's cool. Um, I started playing through fallout again, but you know what? Maybe I should give it a try. And I mean, I'm probably going to get lost in the fallout. I get it. But um, I've definitely wanted to go through that and just kind of just BS and just, I don't know. And again, I open my big mouth and I make stupid puns and I could be like, oh, I could call it Fallout Friday. I don't know. Ooh. So I know. Calm down before I commit myself to something here. <laughs> um, there's, uh, yeah, this, this little setup, which you can't see, it's all in front of me. Um, I'm going to change this up. So maybe I'll actually be able to properly do some stuff. Cause like I said, I'm a terrible content creator. So I don't know. I I'll maybe, maybe you'll see me walk in the wasteland next. Who knows? Maybe that's a story for a different day. Maybe we'll that's see. A, that's a reference. That's another follow. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone didn't catch it, that was a reference. As for me, you'll find us all back here tomorrow night, breaking down the last four episodes, episodes five, grade of fallout on Amazon. Uh, I, I was planning on doing Civil War, but I haven't heard a lot of great things about the movie. So I'm going to see it hopefully this weekend. Uh, Texas said that he movie was not. Yeah, movie he was movie. not. It was not what, what, I, what a lot of people hoped it would be. I, I've heard a couple people say that, <laughs> that the political messaging in it, they thought it was going to be kind of one thing, but it really kind of wasn't. It was something else. Uh, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a watch hopefully this weekend, and, and maybe I'll like it more. Maybe I'll change it. For, as of right now, after Fallout, we'll be doing the Real Genius Review. And then, uh, what is it, the 25th? Uh, I had actually almost forgot this was happening. Boy, the, the draft snuck up on me this year. I don't know how. But the 25th, we'll be breaking down round one of the NFL draft. Oh, uh, see who's going to go where. I'm sure me and Tex will be here. Probably some, other, uh, probably some other football fans oh, yeah. will be chiming in. Uh, so we'll be following Maybe we'll that. split. Do you want football or fallout? We'll, you know. <laughs> are, you, are you asking me? Uh, football. Well, you, you guys can go do football. We'll, uh, me and Brady go play football. That's what we'll say, yeah. Is that even a question? Like, you know, I, I, I've already answered that five minutes ago. That's football. Come on. <laughs> Come on, yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. The fallout. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be an interesting draft. There's a lot of things that can possibly happen still. Normally, I mean, the number one pick is pretty much right. it's pretty locked. But I mean, after that, I mean, there's a lot of things that go. Oh yeah, it it's, should make the first round very interesting this year. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. If the first great. pick is uh, not Caleb Williams, I'd be shocked. But you know, me too. We'll see what me too. But after that, even there's yeah. a lot of crazy shit that can go down. So. So we're going to see a lot true. of people are trying to a lot of people are trying to position themselves to get one of these quarterbacks, and I'm not particularly blown away by any of them coming out of college. But, uh, I'm but not we'll either. see. And then obviously next month we've actually got some good horror movies lined up for next month. I was just talking to uh, to Tex about it before we went live. He, it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a happy month, especially the last half of the month for Tex. He's, we're we're going to be right in his wheelhouse for sure. There's going to be a Don't lot you of like clowns. A lot of Rob Zombie love the last uh, the last couple of weeks of next month, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to it. But uh, 
Thanks all of you for coming to hang out. We very much appreciate it. We will see you guys tomorrow as we break down uh, episodes five, six, seven. <laughs> about now that they can get full spoiler and do all of it. <laughs> but until next time, we'll see you again. Adios. I mean, she gets kind of naked like in the first episode. I mean, was there even like front... I can get to your boots, right? Get that one. No, no, she got no man the dress ass. stays on. The dress stays on. Damn it. The, we got man ass and she she stays full of clothes. I'm calling bullshit and she... No one fucks you, just hike, dress. you just hike the dress up. It's just, it's just convenient. No, they... There is no excuse for man ass and she stay she does not get naked.